going on, everybody? It's your boy, Darrow Zeros. C4. C4. You know, C4 is with me as well. Uh, this is... Oh, man. Well, let's, let's, let's boot Overwatch up as we're getting ready to talk through this. Uh, this is another episode. I guess we did podcast before, I guess. Maybe that's the way to, to frame this. We've done podcasts before on Beast Mode TV channel. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is this is going to be a uh this is the Beast Coast, the first ever Beast Coast podcast, but it's kind of just a continuation of what we were doing in earlier podcasts, I suppose. Hopefully with like some guests and some formatting and stuff like that. So thanks for uh clicking on this one and jumping in with us. Uh this is going to be our first one in quite a while, so Hopefully uh, we can take what we're going to do today and then build on that and make it better over time. Uh, feedback is always uh, welcome. And one of the things that you guys can do is on all these podcast videos, uh, you can leave questions for a potential like Q&A part of the podcast. So uh, if you remember that, do that right now so that you can uh, we'll take a look at them and maybe answer some of the best Q&A questions in the next podcast if you have another question. Yeah. All right. Another thing I'm kind of thinking is maybe vote. Like, I don't know if our internet could hold it with both us playing, but maybe this could be something that, is like, if they would prefer a live stream format, be it, like, directly onto YouTube or not. Yeah. Then they, that way there we have, like, the chat box kind of rolling with us while yeah. we're doing it. Oh, yeah. We but if it doesn't matter, this obviously is probably a safer way for us to do it because our internet's... Kind of sketchy at times. Well, and it's the winter months, so yeah. it, that means that the weather's bad, or it's even worse. But if they would rather do that and have like the interaction kind of style, like like be something we could try, like at least to do a trial run. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're just I'm gonna turn the game volume down just a little bit, just to scotch. But I'm, I'm worried that they're not gonna hear us over all this like other stuff. Sorry guys for that. I think we're okay. I think we're gonna be okay. So yeah. Uh. The podcast is going to have a bunch of weird, like, formats to it. But right now, uh, we're going to talk sports, because that's what we know. Uh, the three... Actually, I'm not even going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you the three things that we're going to talk about today. Uh, but basically, how we're going to try to do this is talk one thing from MMA, talk one thing from uh, the NFL, and then talk one thing from the EPL. I think that overall, I, like I mean, you can you could disagree, but I'd say between both of us, those are probably our three biggest uh, like sports we would watch. Yeah. You know what I mean? The three things that we know, the three things that we follow, like collectively, the most. Also uh, like our channel demographic. Yeah, honestly, like yeah, sports sports are pretty much our channel demographic. That's why we're doing this section. It's not all going to be sports though. This is just part of the channel podcast. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to be a gong show, guys, so just stay with us. Stay with us. I hope you... Uh, we're playing Overwatch. Before we get into things, we're playing Overwatch. This is all live, so I'm going to try not to care too much about the gameplay right now, just because it's going to take away from... Uh, Speak for yourself. Yeah, no, of course. Your C4 is over there. Fuck! In the middle of the lake. We're trying to keep you're it. Gonna, yeah, you got some F-bombs and shit. Yep. So, yeah, if, you're, uh, if your parents are in the room and you got the speakers on... Uh, this is not a family-friendly podcast, so would recommend putting some headphones on, and, or uh, just wait until people are not around to watch this. So, uh, with all that, they're getting into. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With all that garbage out of the way, though, let's uh, let's talk. Let's 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 kick it. Uh, so, should we start up with NFL first? I don't know. I think we should save maybe NFL for. For last, middle. Make it middle. The middle. We'll make it middle. Uh, middle. All right, cool. We'll make it middle. So, uh, l the first thing let's talk about. We're gonna do MMA first, guys. Uh, the one thing we're gonna talk about today, because we could talk MMA like for an entire like podcast every week. Joe Rogan does that shit. Uh, we're gonna talk about Mark Hunt and Brock Lesnar. So this fight happened a long time ago, and uh, you know. Since then, Mark Hunt has been talking a lot of shit about Brock Lesnar, and rightfully so, you know? Uh, it came out that Brock Lesnar was taking performance-enhancing drugs, 
Which, you know, look at him, he's a freak beast. Is that really uh, a surprise to anyone? I don't think so. But Mark Hunt has uh, come out, and why we're going to talk about this now is because the Las Vegas uh, Athletic Committee or whatever, like the guys that actually like hand down their, their rulings. Commission. Yeah, yeah, the commission have have like officially like had the hearing and have fined him like so their official punishment has been brought down and the, what the punishment was was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in fines and then a year off but the year off is you I'm pretty sure it's gonna be retrospective from like the time that like he hasn't been allowed to fight right now right so I'm pretty sure that the the so is it already to like take into consideration like time served that's what I mean so I'm pretty sure that it's going to be, like, he hasn't been allowed to fight now, so the year the year off is going to be, like, since basically his last, or, like, since he popped, you know what I mean? Which means he's already sold, like, served how many months, you know what I mean? I don't know, when was that yeah. mark, when was the mark on? Like, like, four, yeah, like three, four months. Yeah, so he's already, like, three, four Almost months, half. like, done his suspension. Uh, and Mark Hunt's being like, this is bullshit, I want half of Brock Lesnar's purse because he... You know, he, he he was taking steroids when he beat me, and uh, I I kind of agree with him because Rock Lesnar made 2.5 million dollars off that fight. I think Mark Hunt only made like 500 grand or something. Yeah. Like he got paid, but it's definitely nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Like definitely not in the same ballpark. Yeah, and and like I said, it's I think it's a trash uh, move from like listen, don't get me wrong. I love Brock Lesnar. He's just a freak. He, you know what I mean? He's a he's a spectacle. He's a show in and of himself. So watching him fight is fucking awesome. You know what I mean? And honestly, I don't care if he's fucking. Yeah. And really, like for me personally, I don't get. I don't give a shit if he's juiced to the fucking tits with steroids when he goes into the ring. It doesn't affect me. Whatever. It's just it's more entertaining. But if I was Mark Hunt, man, like he he's in there with already like a freak. A freak beast of a individual. He, you know what I mean. He he didn't get paid any extra. He's he's got an asterisk next to that fight. Like I would argue that like no one really knows Mark Hunt any better. Like the exposure it got him. You know what I mean. I don't yeah. think that like the exposure really like is not gonna help his career. And Brock Lesnar got off with he made 2.5 million, and he got off. He only had to give back 250 thousand of it. It's that's like that's ridiculous, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I don't know. Like, from a from a career move, Brock Lesnar is not gonna he, like best case scenario. Brock Lesnar in the UFC is gonna fight twice a year. Let's say that's a best case scenario. And now he's like, he's got. Well, this plus he's still with like WWE, right? So it's not like that's his only income source. It's not that big. Like he's probably making more. From yeah. WWE than he was with the UFC anyway. Yeah, let's be honest. So this not is like not... Yeah. Brock Lesnar doesn't give a shit about this. But you know, obviously. In my point, my take on this whole situation is... Like, I'm a fan of both guys. Obviously, Brock Lesnar's like a freak fight, and then Mark Hunt's more so like... he's You're always going to get a good heavyweight fight with Mark Hunt. Yeah, you're but right. But the fact that, like, he's calling bullshit to this, he is like a claim because, like... I think he's fought, I don't know what the actual number is, and like, you can't really consider he was like a pride fighter, and steroids are pretty much encouraged in pride. Yeah, yeah. It's something crazy, like, three of the heavy, like, three of his last, like, six UFC fights, the guys have popped after. Yeah. So he's just like, but what the fuck? Like, Mark Hunt is definitely not on PEDs. Like, he's a chubby Samoan. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if I'm Mark Hunt, I'm just like, when it, like, he doesn't seem like the kind of guy that cares about titles, and like, if in retrospect, if he fought a guy with steroids and he lost, he's not going to be... No, he's a money. He looks like a. He's like a prize fighter in every definition of the word. He's like, I don't give a fuck about the title. Just give me fights. Yeah, yeah. He wants. Like he that. wants a big fight. But like, he wants to yeah, fight the best guy. His reason for Brock Lesnar, you could definitely see. Like, if you were Mark Hunt, you'd be getting fed up. Like, man, I'm fucking. Obviously, like Mark Hunt's diet's probably not too crazy, but like he's busting his ass off to be clean. And every time he fights a guy, they they they're dirty. Like they're not fucking playing by the rules. But I think the issue to that is, is like when you're heavyweight and you fight the way Mark Hunt fights. Like, you know, with whole concussion, CTE, all that shit. Yep. Like, if you're fight, he's constantly fighting guys that are, like, being unnatural. Like, what is, like, you must think, like, what the fuck's this doing to my health? Like, I'm always fighting clean yep. athletes, guys that can get, like, within the realm of what their, like, whatever their athletic spectrum is. Yep. Like, you just seem like, how much extra damage, how much unnecessary, like, illegal damage am I taking to shots because there's more power behind them because of the steroids? And this has been a persistent thing, and it seems like... 
like realistically, if it's been a thing for like three years, like, for just Mark Hunt specific case, he's like, what the fuck's changing? Like nothing is being done to really like these whatever punishments they have on these guys right yeah. now clearly aren't working. And USADA is not fucking everyone. Like a lot of people make a big deal about USADA, but USADA is a fucking. They're such a shit show, man. Like. They just, like, have a vendetta against the Diaz Briars, brothers, and, you know what I mean? Like, they come down so hard yeah. on the Diaz brothers, right? For, like, marijuana. And, and John, then, well, and John Jones got one. Yeah, yeah, John Jones. Oh, on the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, okay, so, like, John Jones got the estrogen blockers, right? Which is, like, his story's kind of, like, it's pretty much bullshit, right? But who's who's to say exactly what parts and how much are actually bullshit? I gotta, I gotta switch yeah. my character. By the way, if you guys are watch, you guys are watching uh, my onboard thing, so you're gonna see just like our team being garbage. Oh, anyway, horrible. I mean, uh, yeah, I suck. This I is agree. A fucking horrible team. Yeah, yeah. I agree that like, you know, I think you saw that like fucking drop the ball. Like Brock Lesnar in the heavyweight fight after not fighting for how long, and you're not gonna like be testing him, testing him like, th and that result's not gonna get pushed through. You know, before the fight, like, if you're USADA, well, and your, like, MO is, like, we're gonna have clean fights no matter what, and ev no one's above the law, and, like, all this bullshit, and you, you don't do everything you can to, like, <coughs> you should be testing the shit out of, like, your main event guys. They should be tested well, in and out. do you what happened with that? What do you mean? Where, like, basically, Brock Lesnar got, like, an exemption. Yeah, like, yeah. You have to get tested, like, three times or whatever, but just because it was kind of, like, a last-second, like, save-the-card fight, like, Brock Lesnar got, like, unheard-of exemptions from steroid drug testing. Like, I don't think he did. He got tested, like, once. But I'm just and, saying, oh, like, yeah, that's clean. like, like what are we fucking talking about here? You know, are we talking about, like, a clean sport? Or are, are you saw it as a bunch of fucking hypocrites? And Like, what, you know what I mean? Like, where... Yeah. And like I said, once again... I don't really care about this. Like, I think that it's fucking annoying that, like, USADA picks on the Diaz brothers, so, like, I kind of, like, have a hate on for them. But, like, as far as seeing Brock Lesnar just, like, a absolutely being a freak beast because he's on roids, like, he's already a genetic freak, but, yeah. Like, that's a spectacle for me, and I like the entertainment part of fighting, so, yeah, I'm all for, like, let him get juice to the tits if that's what he wants to do. But, like... You know, same thing as you were kind of saying. Like, if you're fucking Mark Hunt, Jesus Christ, man. Everybody you're fighting is popped. Like, what are all these USADA tests and this, that, and the other thing? Like, what's the point of this? You know what I mean? Like, what are we trying to do here? Like, his, and his career is undoubtedly being shortened because of, like, the amount of yeah. damage he's taking, right? Like, this isn't one fight. This isn't two fight. This is, like, Mark Hunt going to war, you know, for all of his... Heavyweight and heavyweight too. Yeah, every time. I feel I feel like heavyweight yeah, exactly. is just yeah. like that's like the biggest discrepancy because it's like if you're a smaller weight guy and you're using steroids, that's not necessarily to bulk on weight. You're probably using the steroids to help you make like your weight cut yep. kind of thing. Whereas heavyweight, it's not only like the heavyweight's the most dangerous division because every other weight class is within ten pounds. Heavyweight yep. is fucking between yep. two hundred five and two sixty five. When Overeem like, kicks, between kicks, a kicks a you at heavyweight, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? With his, like, yeah. his fucking, his quads that are the size of my torso. That's going to be different than Mighty Mouse, if, even if Mighty Mouse is fucking taking steroids, right? You know what I mean? The damage yeah. there is, it's a different kind of damage. It's a different, like, the, the, like the weight, and, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, there's no need to, I don't think there's any real need to hammer that home any further than that. So yeah, that's uh basically the the this, the consensus is that both of us agree that Mark Hunt has a case. Yeah, yeah, and I think that he's getting I think he's getting fleeced right now, honestly. Like I think he's absolute. I don't I don't know if I agree with him like getting the purse thing because that's not really like is that like precedent? Is that like established that like that's what happens uh, when they no, pop? No, no, no. That's like so, that's so yeah, just, like kind of outlandish. That's what he wants. So like yeah, I don't I don't agree with Mark Hunt's like claim to like. Brock, Brock, Le Brock Lesnar's, like, money or anything, but I absolutely agree that, like, he's, like, Brock Lesnar's getting off with a slap on the wrist, and USADA really, like, yeah. fucked the dog on this, and the UFC obviously don't really care about uh, the fighters and are really caring about, like, they're caring about the money. They want the cash money on that, right? You know, yeah. I, th I think that that's, like, money talks, and at the end of the day, they wanted a spectacle to save that fight card, and they got it, you know? All right. Any you got any 
other anything you want to add on that before we pop over the next topic? Well, you could uh, for UFC, just because I don't know when the next time we're doing this. So the Ronda Rousey return fight is in like a week. Yeah, where she finally comes back. Uh, I well, I mean, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you my. You you say what you want to say, and then I'll give you my take on it. I guess. Well, the fight card, it's the final fight card. It's two oh seven, and the card's kind of like I don't know. Not the best card of all time, but if you guys didn't check out 206 and you're kind of like hesitant because that was the one that was in Canada and um, a lot of fights got canceled, like the main event was Daniel Cormier and Anthony Rumble Johnson for the 205 belt and that got pulled. So it was like one of those typical UFC Canadian cards that's a shit show and they have to like rearrange it all the time. Yeah. But all the fights were fucking amazing. There was three fights on there that could be like, there was three fights that were debatably fight of the night. And there's like a not there's like two knockouts of the year candidates, and there's a fight of the year candidate. So if you haven't checked that out, go do that. But for 206, pretty much it's Ronda Rousey's return fight. There's a couple other like, I think there's like one of the midget fights for the for the, you know, like whatever. They're like 120 pounds, so who gives a fuck? Yeah, yeah. Basically, Ronda Rousey's coming back, and she's fighting this gigantic lesbian, and she's actually a lesbian, like a Brazilian <laughs> lesbian. Um, she, oh, literally, it's got to be either Ronda Rousey's got to like fucking steamroll her in a minute and submit her. Yep. Or she's like not the same fighter and gotta get rocked. Yep. Uh, That's pretty much. Here's my you want here so here's my take on it. Uh, I think women's fighting in MMA is overrated. That's I'm gonna I'm gonna start with that so you guys can tell what kind of uh, what kind of path I'm going down here. Uh, even when Ronda Rousey was really big. I wasn't a I wasn't a fighter fan of her fights. I think that she was uh, when she was at her like prime at, at her height. I think that she was in a super weak division, and she was she was a one trick pony, and no one had an answer for the fact that she was just gonna judo slam you and then armbar you out. You know what I mean? So yeah. for me, I That's think that point. I think that Ron I don't think it's overrated though because my my just my counterpoint before you like carry right. on with it is yeah, yeah. for you saying that women's fights are overrated. Like, I remember when they first started having women fights, and, like, everyone was, like, Gina Carano and yeah. Misha Tate and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, those those fights, to their credit, were, like, sometimes the, the most exciting fight on the card because, like, it felt like they had something to prove kind of thing. Yeah. But I think if you're going to go, like, if your next point that you're going to jump into is, like, the whole strength of division, that is 100% valid. Because, and not only the strength of the division, like, there's a couple all right people, but the fact yeah. that, like, Misha Tate kept being, like, the next big challenger. She's fought Misha Tate, like, three times. Yeah. And Misha Tate, when realistically, when all said and done, is a average at best fighter. Like, that kind of, like, speaks to the strength of the division. Yeah. But I think the key, the biggest thing is that this is, like, you're in the world of two superstars. Like, when you have two superstars in a division, let alone in the same company, and they're just not fighting for some reason... Like, I, I get, like, eyebrows raised. Because for the longest time, everyone wanted to see Randy Couture, the face of the UFC, versus Fedor when he was, like, yep. in pride and bouncing around. Like, that just couldn't happen because they're never on the same thing. But that the Fedor-Randy Couture fight in the female division is Ronda Rousey and Cyborg. Like, those are, like, the two most, like, they're the two best and dominant female fighters in history. And they've been around, like, the same kind of division, same, like neighborhood I guess you could say and like that fight's never happened and it seems like that's been Ronda Rousey saying like eh I think I'm yep. alright and then they just keep saying like oh the weight's an issue and all this stuff but like realistically it seems to me like they're like when you were Ronda Rousey and you're you're getting paid an outrageous amount of money and you're walking through people and it doesn't you don't have to take like that big risk of fighting a oh. cyborg oh it's, it's bullshit it's, it's, it speaks to like she's taking it safe she's trying to go like the this, safe this is a box with that, everything i hate that because that's just a boxing but bullshit that's the, boxing yeah, bullshit the, uh, the only other thing would be you could see it being what was the other fight what was the fight that never lived up to the height? It seems like it could be like the fucking Pacquiao Mayweather, where like maybe they're trying to take it from a business standpoint. Like maybe let's fucking see how long we can wait and build up. Like, are they ever gonna fight? Are they finally gonna fight? And then and it's gonna be too fucking late. Where like right now, yeah, like yeah. Ronda may be beyond her prime after losing. And then is that fight gonna be what it would have been when Ronda was fucking undefeated, beating everyone in a minute, and then Cyborg was undefeated, beating everyone in a minute? But. Um, that pretty much comes back to the point where you said that Ronda is not impressive. I I think yeah. that she is impressive, and I think women's fights have been good, but I think her she's mentally not strong enough, and she's not mentally strong enough to be like this, the main well, face of female MMA, strictly because she just won't fight Cyborg. Yeah. All right. Well, let, let me let me get back. I mean, all valid points. You know, uh, it's it's. I think it's more of a personal preference. I just don't find female fights like. 
I just don't like like I don't like watching the the like the super well, not, light not guys the, not the fight. Not to you again, but yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, you like as much as I've known you watching, but you just always hate guys that are like if you're like the midget fighters. If you're under, like, if you're not under, gonna be a like, knockout. Yeah, if you're under like 170, I probably don't care about your your you fighting. It's just <laughs> yeah, like well, put this way. Remember, like that we watched UFC before. There's all these other small divisions, and like yeah, yeah. 155, you pretty much only want to watch a 155 fight when BJ Penn was fighting, because he was like the only guy that had like knockout power. Yeah. Every other 155 fight, it might not be a bad fight, but you just knew like they're straight up weren't strong enough to like knock out the other guy. So it was gonna be a decision every time. Yep. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, stop cutting me off. All right, this is my podcast. For God's sakes. Uh, yeah. So. I think that the divi- that Ronda's overhyped, and as far as her coming back, I think that uh, I don't think she's gonna be the same fighter. You know what? Uh, like my my big prediction on this fight is that Ronda is gonna end up being. Remember when Chuck Liddell got knocked out there, and then his chin just went from yeah. like like being like with the shit. Yeah, he just went like being invisible. Like, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, to God. I think that. Ronda's everyone. Ronda's taking so much time off. I think that uh, what this is is maybe her final, her final big payday, and then she's just gonna go do movies. And that I don't have anything. I don't know about payday, but I think it's I think it's her final push. Yeah. I think if she loses this fight, she's done. Yeah. She's just gonna be like, I'm just gonna go make movies. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. I think that she's not gonna she's not gonna bother like continuing on if she loses. This is, this is it. You know what I mean? This is. This is her career chances, in my opinion. So, and I don't think th- I think yeah. that she's just she's just doing it because, like, she comes from like Olympia background. You know what I mean? Like, isn't her mom like an Olympian and shit like that? I yeah. don't think that she could like go out the way she like if she never went back and tried like another fight. You know what I mean? I don't think that yeah, she, yeah. like I don't th- I just don't think like she could live with herself if she didn't like take a fight. And I, I like I like I don't hate Ronda Rousey. Don't get me wrong. Uh, even though I don't, I don't care about like her fights. I don't think she's like fun to watch. I don't. I have nothing against like. I think she's cool. You know what I mean? I've I've seen all like the interviews and stuff like that. She seems like she's pretty cool. I saw her on that level of like you want to watch her just to see if she's gonna lose kind of thing. Like, yeah, that's yeah. What, like at that point at her peak before she lost, that's what she. If you liked her, you yeah. like watching her dominate. And if you didn't like her, you're still gonna watch to see if she'd get fucking. Oh hell like, yeah! Is, is this gonna I, be the time? I was so like I was just like. I can't wait for her to lose so that people will shut the fuck up about her. Like I was. Yeah, I remember. I was in fucking. <laughs> I was in Philly for an Eagles game, and we're trying to find a bar to watch her fight Holly Holm. And then like we just like ah fuck, let's just go back home. Like it's gonna be like a one way fight anyway. And then like my yeah. buddy was like, Ronda just got knocked out. And we're like, no way, no fucking way that happened. Yeah. Just like. I got one other thing to shit on Ronda too. Uh, she has like the biggest dick, like the worst trainer. It's just like this Armenian guy. That's, yeah, no. Like, probably the most hated guy yeah. in the MMA community. She was like, um, he's already just like from Ronda. He's like really cocky, and like Ronda did an Ultimate Fighter show, and he like came off just like a super like. Not yeah, only cool. is he weird, like he get weird vibes, but just like a dick. And then like he thinks he's like 100 percent like he's never fought MMA, but he tries to do the tough guy thing. And like he was trying to like talk shit to guys that like have fought in the UFC, and everyone's like, "Who the fuck are you? Like, what have you ever done?" Yeah, yeah. But then in his last fight, Ronda's going out with a heavyweight named Travis Brown. Yeah, yeah. And, like, Travis Brown was like at one point like a really really dominant heavyweight. Like he's six seven, great power, and like was like maybe a fight or two away from getting the heavyweight title. But then ever since he started going with Ronda, he changed his coaching staff to this Armand guy who's like strictly just like Ronda and his coach. And like yeah. now he looks like he's like one of the worst fighters in the UFC. But in his last fight. He fought um, Fabricio Werdum and he lost. But yeah. like after the fight, like that Armin guy like started swinging at like Fabricio Werdum. Like there was almost like what? a post fight. Like I didn't see that. Yeah, it was like because it was yeah. It was like he was just like frustrated. Like he was raging that yeah, his yeah. fighter lost. And like he started like go at like fucking Fabricio Werdum, who was like just one fight removed from being the heavyweight champion. So like yeah, everyone's yeah. like, man, this guy sucks. And like Ron, everyone's like Ronda has to move on from him. Like Joe Rogan hates him. Like all these guys just like. He's like the laughing stock, and Ronda still sticks with him. Like even Ronda's mother said that this guy's like ruining her career. Yeah, because like Ronda's like she hasn't developed anything. Like she's still a one-trick pony. Yeah, under she's this a one guy, but judo judo throw armbar. You know what I mean? That's well, like everyone's because this guy here's supposed to be like a fucking judo guy that's helping with her striking, and like her striking still is like there's memes on Reddit about how bad her striking was looking like during like pre-fights for this fight. Yeah. Like, okay, so you absolutely didn't work on or approve on a damn thing since you started this? Yep. 
Yeah, I've heard about that Actually, guy. Actually, I don't want to make. I don't want to make MMA a big long part, but there's also oh, one whatever. other key thing okay, we should touch on. Let's just, let's just talk about it. This is a podcast. We do what How we want. How can we not talk about MMA? How can we not talk about MMA and not talk about the most polarizing figure in MMA right now? Uh, Conor McGregor. Is he polarizing? I no. They I stripped. I wasn't aware. Conor McGregor's like the most pop. Oh, yeah. He's they fucking polarizing. stripped him of his belt. Yeah. It was his last fight against whatever. He was like the two belt champion for 145 and 155. Did they and though? Then he won the 155 belt. Connor said yeah, he no, did. No, he was. He was. Con- no, no, no. But I, Connor said he didn't. Yeah. He, he yeah, like. He, it's done because the fight that happened at the last pay per view was for his belt. Like. No, no. I mean. You know what I'm saying. I don't mean did they did they strip him? I mean, Connor says he didn't agree to drop the belt, but at the same time, I he's not exactly raging that like, like I feel like Connor McGregor because would really make a shitstorm of this if, you know what I mean if. Yeah, if he really well, didn't want to drop belt, I don't think belt. he ever wants to make the weight cut because it's the he's like fighting at he was fighting at 170 to fight oh, Nate yeah. Diaz. Yeah, like I, I saw. I remember I fought seen, at 155. Yeah. I've seen the videos of him like looking like he's on death's door because he's yeah trying, was, to, make trying to make that cut. So I don't think like he's ever gonna make that again. So like I that's why I think he's like ah fuck whatever. Like he wants like the du- the dual championship from like a marketing standpoint because yeah, he's yeah. like a big promoter himself. But like yeah. I don't think he'd ever fucking. Like, he will always be, I never lost that belt. They took it from me. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. But, like, he's not, he, you could definitely see, like, he definitely didn't have the eagerness to be like, no, fuck you, this is my belt. Yep. But I think it was smart, because, like, now, right now in the UFC, because Conor McGregor basically has, he has the 155 belt, but he's having a kid, so he's taking a bunch of time off. Yeah, like, yeah, like a right year now, off. Right now, the 145 belt, did. yeah, the Crazy. 145 belt, which is the one that they relinquished, has an interim champion, and now the 155 has to get an interim champion. Yeah. So there's not a lot of, like, you know. I don't know if you want to call interim champions paper champions, but strictly because Conor McGregor, there's like two big divisions that only have interim, yeah, yeah, uh, champions. But I guess that's money. That's more fight. That's that's, that's more. You that's know, a champion versus champion right there. Sell. That's a yeah, champion yeah, versus yeah, champion to unify the belts. Yeah, yeah. So I think that I think that they're for, from a Conor purely Conor McGregor standpoint. That's it's like he doesn't care about that. Let them be an interim champion. That's yeah. a that's a way easier way to sell the fight. Champion versus champion. I think John Jones is another guy that, that's like that. He's just like, I don't give a shit. Let there be a fucking... Let DC hold the belt. It's just going to make yeah. my payday Everyone bigger when John I'm ready. Everyone going to fucking body roll him. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. It's just going to make his payday bigger when he comes back, right? Yeah, I don't know. I think that, like I said, I think that if Connor really honestly cared, he would be raised in hell. Because remember what happened when he didn't want to show up to a press conference for the DS yeah, fight? Yeah, yeah. He fucking lost his shit. It was fucking all over the news, all over Twitter. He said he was going to, like, quit MMA forever. It's like, I think that if someone... Yeah. I think that if he really didn't want to lose his belt, there would be a fucking shitstorm like you would not believe. I think that he's just being like, yeah, I didn't drop it. Dana took it from me. Just, uh, you know, yeah. let it let it happen, in my opinion. That's my opinion. I don't know. I don't know how you feel on that, but just seems yeah, fishy. Not, yeah, yeah. Same. Uh, but, yeah. All right, that should be... So that's that's enough. That's enough on MMA. We'll move on. Uh, finally, uh, did we go? Was that the first thing? That's the first thing. Shit. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. The next thing we're gonna talk about is NFL. Uh, once again, you know, this is Beast Mode TV. C4 cool, can talk about the NFL for 17 hours, but uh, we're gonna keep it to one yeah. specific topic and then move on. And the topic. This weekend features my Patriots uh, in an AFC matchup uh, between them and the Broncos. In case you didn't know, uh, I think that's going to be a huge matchup for both teams and big tests on both Patriots sides. Patriots get a fucking steamroll. I think that I think that you're right. I think the Patriots are going to win, uh, but the teams are like it's not. I don't know if it's like a, a sure shot. And the reason why is that both teams are like way different from. The last time they fought, each, or like you know, the last time they matched up against each other, like uh, and who's worse? Just, just yeah, okay. I think yeah. there's a big glaring, yeah, big yeah. glaring. Uh, You're right. Missing. There's a big empty spot there on Denver. Yeah. Well, uh, so here's the Patriots. Are just, well, yeah, we have no Gronk though, man. Gronk is like literally our biggest offense. Who are they threat. signing though? Uh, there's, a, a guy, there's a there's a wide receiver on the Cardinals who is going to be a free agent this year, and he was like in the conversation to be, like, one of the bigger free agents to sign. Yep. But he had a fucking DUI, so the Cardinals released him, and the Patriots signed him. 
They're the only team that like put in a claim to get him. Yep. But yeah, his name's Michael Floyd. Like he's not amazing, but he's definitely like a playmaker. Like he'd probably be debatably like the second best wide receiver on the uh, on the Patriots. And they fucking typical Patriots like watch him just get his shit together and then fucking. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, the, they I think the, I think the, there's fuck. something about the Patriots where it's just like they'll cut you. They don't give a shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Don't they don't. Care. They legit like like if you go if you go to New England. They and you're a superstar. They will cut you. They just will. Look at Randy Moss. Randy Moss yeah. is probably like the biggest thing. Like, yeah. oh, you broke the touchdown record. Oh, you want more money? Yeah, Ooh, nah, we're all set. Go ahead and yeah, we're all set with that. Don't worry about that. You know, right, I'll, I'll I'll get my piece on this one. I let you finish because you're the Patriots fan. I yeah. think that the Broncos, like the Broncos, are in like a rut right now. Their their running backs are hurt. They don't. I don't know what they're doing at quarterback. They just lost to the Titans last week. Yeah. Whereas the Patriots are like finding ways to win, like I don't think that game's gonna be close. In terms of like, I think it's gonna be. It might not be a high-scoring game because obviously the Broncos have like one of the best defenses, but I don't yeah. think it's ever gonna be a game where the Patriots look like they're gonna lose. It might be like fucking TB baby. Like, it's gonna be. TB a, it's cool gonna be like a pocket. like a twenty. It's gonna be like a twenty to six or something yeah. like that. All right, so uh, it's gonna be hard to get the facts straight. Well, we're playing this game real quick, so I'm going to go hide on my screen and read you, read you the differences. So, obviously, Peyton Manning's gone. Uh, other guys, other notable absences, Brock Osweiler, C.J. Anderson, Malik Jackson, uh, all, like, all not available or free retired agents, or free agents up. or, like, something. And then on, on New England side, you got no Gronk, no Chandler Jones, and no Jamie Collins. Uh, that was a good trade. Yeah. I mean, it's just a classic Patriots trade, honestly, you know? It's a classic Patriots trade. Like, watch, you will, wa we went to Cleveland, so watch them just go to free HD and the Patriots, like, resign. Pick like, them up for less yeah, money, right? yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, fuck. Nothing would surprise me with the Patriots. We are getting rolled right now in this video game. Uh, I think, I don't know, man. TB has got a chip on his shoulder. I think that he's going he's gonna to try to win, like, another Super Bowl this, this year just to spite Roger Goodell. You know, he's a freak. Fuck, he's an MVP. He's he, an MVP consideration. Yep. I don't think he'll ever get the MVP. Well, that's something, that's something we'll end it on, because I made a video about this, but you're an actual Patriot fan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, continue about the, the game matchup. And then we'll I think that, well, I mean, when you look at the Patriots and the fact that Gronk's out and just the, the injuries we've had on offense as well, I mean, like, Blunt's a fucking revelation. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy now that we have, like, a run game. Uh, I think Blunt's always been good. It's just people underrate him. He's it, fucking a power back. What do you yeah, mean? He's yeah. like a power back that has like he's probably the closest thing right now in the league to Marshawn Lynch, and he's like always been like a Marshawn Lynch light. He doesn't yeah. have like the actual like the raw talent that Marshawn Lynch has, but you can see like every now and again Blunt will have like a Marshawn Lynch esque run. I'd say like yeah, the fact I agree. that he's so slept on like fucking like he went to free agency because the Patriots said we don't want to pay you money. And no yeah. one bid on him. Like, the yeah, Patriots yeah. like, oh, you're coming back? All right. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I mean, he has some off-field issues, I guess. Like, he went to, I think he went to, what happened was the Patriots didn't re-sign him. And then he went to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then he got caught smoking weed, and they cut him. And then the Patriots brought him back. Yeah. And then, like, that just shows, like, the, you know, it seems like the Patriots run their, they run a tight ship. But it seems like, I don't know what they do to make it such a tight ship. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, you got, when you got... My thing is, man, there's something, like, I'm, I've been a P Pats fan for, like, ever, right? And, like, I watched Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe was, like, my first guy that, like, when I started watching the Patriots, that's who, like, was starting. Do you have a Bledsoe jersey? Yeah, I do. I did have a Bledsoe jersey, yeah. That old, really old, like, just super old Patriots jersey of Bledsoe. Uh, but, yeah, so Bledsoe was the first, like, first QB that... You know, that was the QB that we had. That was our starter. And I can remember, like, the year that Tom Brady got, got brought in. And at first, you could see that, like, no one really respected this kid, obviously. And, and like, for me, I was, like, I wasn't a huge Bledsoe fan, really, honestly. I mean, he was, like, a... Drew Bledsoe was, like, a shitty Brett Favre. You know what I mean? He was just, like, one of those yeah. gun, gunslinger guys. Yes. Funny fact. Here's a fact. Brett Drew Bledsoe has like the least rushing yards in history. 
Really? He was like his like career rushing yards were like negative four hundred or something crazy like oh, that. Oh shit! Because he's just like cause he's sack just yards yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. Just he's runs, like the, runs so, away. but I mean, hypothetically speaking, I guess you could classify him as the least athletic quarterback in history. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. But yeah, man. So like, I wasn't a big fan of Bledsoe, and honestly, like, like I said, even even then when I was younger and I didn't I didn't know like a lot about football, like I was just getting into it. Uh, I was just like, you're just a shitty Brett Favre. Like that was that was. That's 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 my team. That's my QB, and I can remember when Brady came in. No one really like respected him and shit like that. And like I I thought as soon as like Bledsoe went down, like oh shit, we were bringing this like six rounder in as like our backup for like the rest of this fucking season. And he just like he went on a banana tear. And even like even like a Patriots fan like myself, like went, while that shit was happening, I was just like. Whole, like the whole time, it was like this isn't real. You know what I mean? And then once it was real, I was like, next year we're gonna get fucking crushed. You know what I mean? It was just like some weird yeah. rookie, like fluke, kind of situation. That's like that this happened. Like it's one of those like no one had any tape on our QB. No one had a chance to dissect his weaknesses. N- he, they're gonna have them figured out for next season, and we're gonna be toast. But then it just never. They never did. You know what I mean? And now it's like yeah. 10 years later and still no one really has like, I mean, what's an answer for Tom Brady, honestly? Like, like, is there any specific thing that you can say about... Matt, put Matt Light in there and hopefully yeah, he tears ACL. Yeah, tears ACL. Like, I mean, there's, there's things that you can say that obviously will stop Brady from being effective, but those things are every quarterback. You know what I mean? Like, oh, don't let him get set up in the pocket. You know, it's like, yeah. That's that's true for every single quarterback, you know. It's like Tom Brady has no kind of weaknesses like that, and I think the only weakness for Tom Brady is he's not a he's running guy. Have, he always has he, no. He always has a safety net receiver. If it's not Gronk, like the Patriots always get slot receivers, get the f- AKA white guys. Yeah, Brady yeah. always has that guy that's like a great route runner. So like I think if you took those away and you only gave Brady like like burners or something like that yeah, like guys yeah. that are just 100 percent deep ball i think that would be where he might struggle a little bit because like a lot of brady's plays he doesn't have the biggest arm he's never had like a gigantic cannon it's always been throw a short pass to a guy like Julian yeah, yeah. Edelman or something oh like yeah that just like slot work slot receivers everywhere right that's just that's the patriots mo we always got a west welker or a fucking you know insert your insert your name of a really good guy that we're gonna throw be- the ball to Behind the, l- the line of scrimmage, right? You know? Uh, but yeah, so like Tom Brady has no no real like weaknesses like that. And I think that Belichick, I mean, Tom Brady is not a perfect quarterback by any means. There's more, there's more impressive, like physically faster guys. Like Michael Vick in his prime was just like, obviously, like the running is not even an issue. But our team. Yeah, yeah, our team. Our teams have sucked. We're playing quick play if you play this game. And we're getting matched with like. Two-year-olds don't know how to play this fucking game. Anyways, uh, yeah, I think, and I think that the the Bill Check does a great job in the Patriots system of basically compensating for anything that Tom actually does have like a weakness to. You know what I mean? I think that that's why they've been so successful is that Bill Check goes well. Tom needs a guy that he can throw it short to, so there's gonna be a short option on every single play, no matter what. You know? Well, people can see on your screen if you're voting for me or not, so. Uh, I voted for the Lucio. Did not vote for you. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right, so wrap this up. Get your prediction. Was Patriots winning? You're yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Page, pa- I, I have the Patriots winning. I think that it's going to be a blowout. Like I said, I think Brady has a chip on his shoulder, man. I think that even though this team <laughs> hurts, I think he's going to pull him. Well, try to pull him to a. I think everyone's going to try to win the Super Bowl, but you know what I mean. I think he's going to outplay even for Tom Brady's average. Because of what happened at the start of the season with Deflategate, and I'm not even going to get into that. I'll so that's, talk about well, that. Deflategate segues into how the last little point I want to talk about uh, football here is that you know the MVP race. I made a video about it on the channel because basically there's like the pretty much consensus short list of like five, six guys right now. Yep. Tom Brady's on that list, and like Tom Brady's stats are like it's definitely not a runaway this year. I think there's you can go like it's really really close. Like there's not a clear front runner, but it's. One of those things like the quarterbacks are always going to be the front runner. Like there's a there's a couple of running backs on the list, but you always just know like they're not going to give it to a running back. It's always going to go to a quarterback. Yeah, yeah. And it's Brady, the quarter Derek Carr, who's the quarterback of the Raiders, and then there's like a there's a couple other quarterbacks. But I think it's really between those two. But you think the NFL would give no 
Like basically, my whole point was they're not going to give it to Brady because you NFL. Can't. Not you can't just be you know you can't put on your tin hat and think that the NFL hates Brady. You might think there's something like towards that, but obviously I don't think they just straight up hate him. Yeah. yeah. But I think from like a PR standpoint, you don't want to be like here's our MVP. You, you want you want to know what made this MVP, MVP so impressive? We suspended him at the beginning of the year. We disciplined him, and he still had great stats. Like I just think from yeah. like a public relations standpoint, they're not going to like dabble in that. They'll go somewhere else. I think Here's my my big point. looks so bad I, though, man. Already, like if they if they if, yeah. if, if at the end of this year, Patriots end up winning a Super Bowl, and they don't give it to Brady, like, how can you not? You know what I mean? Like that's gonna be a media shitstorm. Here, I got a I got a I got a counterpoint to that. All right, my counterpoint is that the other quarterback stats are pretty similar to Brady's, right? And like yep. the other guys on the Raiders, Raiders have sucked forever. Brady's on the Patriots. They're like. So like I, you kind of that's where you weigh like it's Brady on a winning team. There's all the people saying that he's a system quarterback and stuff like that. But we have a team like the Raiders, and the guy's almost as good. He's on a shittier team, like at least a perceived shittier team. Yeah, well, yeah. And the, he had similar the Raiders, stats, Raiders and the, especially a team like the Raiders. Yeah. But here's here's my big point that I made in my video that a lot of people are like, I never thought about that way. Is that the NFL at the end of the day is a business, right? And yep. Quarterback is the face of like the quarterbacks are going to be the superstars, no matter like how good a running back a defensive player is. League always needs to like have their share super like superstar quarterbacks and like everyone's the big thing this year is people talking about football ratings being down. Yep. And like I think that's because there's no superstar quarterbacks. They're dwindling. Yep. Right now, superstar quarterbacks used to be like a year ago, even two years ago. You had Aaron Rodgers. Yep. You had um, Tom Brady. Yep. Peyton Manning. Yep. Drew Brees. We'll say those are the big four. Sure. Aaron Rodgers had a down year this year. I mean, statistically speaking, he's he's like having an all right year, but the Packers are sucking. Yeah. Drew Brees is not getting any younger. Like he got he's at the end of the road. Yeah, he is. Tom Brady's at the end of the road. Peyton yeah. Manning retired. So you're right now the nucleus of these superstar quarterbacks, it's as weak as it's ever been. Yep. So when you have a guy like Derek Carr, he's twenty four, he's in California. You give him the MVP, not only is he like he has an honest shout for it, I think, but not only that, but he could be like you gotta start churning out these next superstar quarterbacks. You give Tom Brady an MVP right now, what does that do to you from a business standpoint? It's bad. It makes the league look bad because you suspended him. But you give the MVP award to Derek Carr, maybe he might not deserve it as much as Tom Brady, but you're generating, like, now you have this other guy, this other quarterback that's kind of blowing on the screen, and now you can say, he was the MVP last year. There you go. That's how you, like, give him the push. Think of it in wrestling terms. You're giving him the push to yeah, the yeah, next I get, big thing. I, I get you. They're trying like, to make a stare. you got to make a stare. Yeah. Stairs aren't born. They're they like, have a couple. Yeah, so like made. that's why I think Tom, that's like that encompassed with like the off-field issues is why I don't think Tom Brady will win MVP. Yeah, I mean. But that being said, Bill Belichick will probably get Coach of the Year because of what he did in the games without Tom Brady. Yep, you're right. I mean, I mean, they did lose one of them, and they lost. They lost kind of bad to the Bills to end it like the last game before Brady's suspension. But like before that, it was just like okay. We had Garoppolo in at quarterback. We're a little bit unsure if he's going to be like the Brady replacement. And like he played all right, but then Garoppolo got hurt, so they had to like start a rookie. And they yeah, still yeah. like it looked like they didn't miss a beat. Like they still were like shit pumping teams and stuff. I think we got a pig behind us. Yeah, I yeah, agree. I uh, all I'm going to say is be careful putting all of your eggs in one basket. Uh, people, I know people still like Cam Newton. But Cam Newton was made out to be some sort of phenom freak beast while Carolina was on that tear last year. And he's cooled off, to say the least. He got figured out. Yeah. Well, that was a, that's a surprising with Cam Newton. I want to make go on about it. But, like, last year, the Panthers were perceived to be not a playoff team because they lost one, one of their best wide receivers went down to injury. Yep. And, like, everyone's like, oh, man, they're going to be horrible. Then Cam Newton came on and was really, really good. Yeah. But then this year, they they improved. They got more weapons on offense. They got the guy that was out last year back from injury. And Cam Newton sucks. So it's, like, yeah. literally, like, I have no answer on why Cam Newton Isn't, is so, yeah. like, a, the big drop-off. I don't know if he – I don't know. I honestly don't know. But yeah, they just, I just think at the end of the day for the MVP conversation, I think they're going to you – know, people might be upset because there might be a couple Patriots fans that are watching this. But you you know you gotta think from a business standpoint they gotta you know you gotta move on you gotta start getting getting new stars and there's no way if the guys are gonna get new stars on their own by like setting records and being like a must see guy yep. you can just give them the MVP award and that's a way to sell them. Yeah, I mean like I said from a business standpoint makes sense. <laughs> I just think that I mean uh, besides like obviously even if I try to be impartial. I'm still going to have, like, a Patriots bias, obviously. It's, it's like, impossible. 
my team. Uh, but I think that the NFL looks like suspending Brady the way they did, like as late as they did, I think is just a, was a fucking shit move. Made them look awful. And I think that if Brady clearly deserves this shit and they don't give it to them, that's just another like fucking black eye they're giving themselves. You know what I mean? That that's my that's yeah. like my other side of it. It's like, come on, man, Goodell, you already look so bad. If you like, it's just gonna like be another like tin hat thing where it's just like, oh yeah, Goodell has it out for the Patriots if they don't give they it. Have it in, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just gonna be another thing on the list of like, oh this is bullshit. You know. What's next? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The Patriots are, they're all racist. We have to kick the Patriots out of the league for a year. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like some bullshit. Patriots are racist, Rob, because yeah. yeah, when yeah. they had that black guy start at quarterback, that was like the first black quarterback to start for the Patriots since like the fucking like 60s. Listen, they live in Maine. Forever, actually. It might have actually been ever. They're, it might yeah, have actually been no, ever. No one, uh, no one goes, it's cold there. All right? No one wants to go to Boston. I don't know why I said Maine, but... No one wants to go to Massachusetts, all right? It's cold there. Black people don't like the cold. There it is. I don't like the cold either, black people, but here we are, you know? There's a reason why we look at the demographic of uh, an Atlanta Falcons, you know? Where <laughs> I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to take this any further than that. Uh, yeah. So, with with that being another way, let's talk EPL... Uh, this weekend, we the thing we're going to talk about actually features your team, and we're yeah. we're going to be talking about Man City versus Arsenal. And I mean, I don't know. In my opinion, neither of these guys are, are going to be title contenders this year, but uh, they should be. Hilarious. You know, they should be. You know. Uh, well, we'll make this one a little bit quick because I figure this is probably going to be the least yeah. appealing aspect, but it's something I want to talk about. Um. I think Arsenal is going to beat Man City because Man City doesn't have Aguero. And Arsenal, yep. whereas Arsenal has, like, even though they dropped points, they lost away at Everton, even though Everton's undefeated at home on the season. Yep. Alexis Sanchez might be the most informed player in the Premier League right now. Yeah. I uh, mean, along, well, I mean he's you can't say Diego Costa because Diego Costa's been close, but he has, like, didn't he get just hurt or suspended or something like that? Well, I mean, they're tied for goals. So let's let's just look at raw goal-scoring potential. Uh, they're tied for goals, and Alexi Sanchez is a winger. That is, that's enough said there in terms of yeah. who's having a good Plus, season. you know, the work rate kind of thing's a little bit different. Like, Alex Sanchez, like, fucking, like, Lex, you're not seeing Diego Costa make it. Like, Alex Sanchez, for some reason, I don't know how he does it, will still make, like, game-winning tackles. For some, like, he has, like, an incredible work rate. Yep. So, like, I think, with all my bias aside, I think Alexi Sanchez is... MVP right now at VPL. Like if he doesn't win Player of the Year, if he stays at this pace, which is yep. remains to be seen. Oh, well, he's an Arsenal I think player. he's the difference maker. He's I think. End up. I think if you're looking at, um, he has to get his contract is sent too. There's, there's like an ongoing Do contract they? negotiation right now between him and Arsenal. That's and amazing. He, he came out and said that it's Arsenal has to make it happen. Like it sounds like Arsenal's being the stickler. Classic Arsene Wenger saying, yes. "Oh, you're our best player maybe we've ever had." It's like the fucking Invincibles era, but yep. we're gonna nickel and dime you over probably like three or four million bucks. I can just see that happen. Like uh, we need to pay yeah. Aaron Ramsey, okay? We need to keep yeah. Aaron Ramsey on the roster. Yeah. That, but that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say Arsenal's gonna win two one. Uh, we got I Bellerin back. I think Bellerin is a is a bigger get for you guys than a lot of people are probably gonna make that out to be. Uh, I think that. Another, yeah, another fucking Gabriel playing wing back. Yeah. A converted center back. Was, I think was our something that right no one now, wants so. to talk about for Man City is that they're without Fernandinho. And although he is an inconsistent player, in my opinion, I think that he's really been uh, dictating the pace in the middle this year for Man City. And uh, Gundwin is now pretty much is probably done for the season. I think that. Uh, Fernandinho is now more important than he's ever been for hey. City. So, uh, like, I mean, they put... Pep played Yaya Torre. He subbed them on. I don't think, like, I don't care what people say. Pep and Yaya Torre hate each other. He fucking let him go from Barcelona. And, and before, the, uh, uh, before Pep officially, like, was unveiled as... Man City manager, and they were just rumors. It sounded like Yaya Tor was already trying to get a transfer out of Man City to avoid Pep. 
So, I think. Better vote for me. I I didn't. I just backed it. So I think I think they hate each other, and the fact that Pep uh, subbed him on in their last game uh, shows a little bit of desperation. Like he's just like, oh crap, what do I do with my midfield? So yeah, Fernandinho I think is a big a big loss, like a bigger loss than maybe it seems on paper. I think that Arsenal is definitely stronger overall than Man City are right now without Aguero up front. I think that, but the the problem is is that. I can't decide when I'm trying to make a call for this which is going to prevail. Is it going to be who's home? Uh oh, I don't know. I didn't even check. I think Arsenal's home. I just Bravo is so shaky in the net, but Arsenal have an ability just to like just to like give themselves blue balls, you know what I mean, when it comes to trying to score. So I just I can't decide what's going to happen. Is it going to be You know what? This this here's my prediction. Giroud subbed off the bench. Uh, like, just kicks one straight at Bravo, like, goes between his legs. Arsenal win one nothing. Garbage cool. Yeah, I think it's going to be just like... Actually, uh, no. I think 2-1 is a fair thing, because I don't think Arsenal's going to be able to keep a clean sheet. I think Man City will find a way. We consensus Arsenal's going to win this game. Yeah, I think... If it's a winner. If I there's not a tie. I Honestly, if I had to bet, I would probably put money on a tie. I could just see this game being, like, underwhelming. I don't... I think that... I could see this being a thing where, like, both teams don't want to drop a point with Chelsea being... Like, yeah. Arsenal can't drop a point right now because I think right now, if you're looking at the Premier League, Arsenal's probably, well, I mean, because Chelsea has the benefit of, Chelsea was horrible last year. Let's talk about just Chelsea for yeah. me. I'm not going to let you go on a, a tangent on Chelsea, but Chelsea was horrible last year, so now they only have to focus on the league. That is why they have, uh, a, I don't know what they have right now, I think a five-point lead or something on six, Arsenal. Six points. But Arsenal, I would say in terms of, even though we got Bayern Munich and we might be able to fucking get bounced and focus on the league a little bit more, in terms of talent, every other team, like Tottenham, you think on talent-wise they may be able to hang, but yeah, what do you call it? They've been so sporadic. Like they have Harry Kane carrying yeah. over his World Cup form. Fucking Man City, they're, they're not looking that great. Man U struggling a lot. But fucking realistically, Arsenal's probably the only team that could compete oh, with Chelsea fuck? to get that award. What the fuck happened? Oh, my. I don't know. Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, you oh. just saw maybe one of the most embarrassing Overwatch plays I have ever seen. I was looking at my phone as I was walking out. As I was oh. fucking walking out. Yeah, I didn't even. I was even. Um, I just. I had my fucking like joystick go straight. <laughs> like I see Arsenal, fucking this being like a zero-zero tie, because Arsenal knows that like they can't lose. They need to get a point from this game. But that that's that. I think that's yeah. all it needs to be said. We both agree that Arsenal. Sh- if there is going to be a winner, it will be Arsenal. Yeah, I think. I think so. I think that. Uh, I th- but here's here's my thing. I think that Man City have are gonna go all out. I think that there's a lot of pressure on Pep Guardiola. I know that uh, a lot of people are saying that Man City's not necessarily Pep's team yet, and I would agree with them. I think that he's gonna need probably two more transfer windows at least to make Man City like into his image or whatever you want to like phrase that. Uh, and I and I agree with that. I deserve. I agree that he also. I hate Pep. First of all. I hated Pep at Barcelona. I think that he was gifted a, a an incredibly talented Bayern Munich team uh, it, that sh- that showed that there was boring. Sh- he's that, a, but he's I think a that boring winner. Like, sh- I used to like Barcelona, and then when he went there, he just made it boring, effective soccer. Yeah, uh, I think that, uh, like I said, I think he was gifted a very talented uh, Bayern side, and he didn't really do much with him, all things considered. You know, because Bayern was already wrapping up the league before Pep was here. So I think that uh, he really wasted some of his chance. He like, there's no reason that Pep shouldn't have been in every single Champions League final with that Bayern team. They're so strong, man. And it shows like if Pep was this incredible freak beast manager, uh, he would have been able to like he had more than enough talent. You know what I mean? Yeah. That he should have been like he was successful, but that was like he's successful in a way that Bayern Munich expects to be successful every league. Like, they expect to win the German League every year. They expect to be able to focus on uh, Champions League and go far because they're going to wrap the league up in Germany early. You know what I mean? So I think that Pep was pretty lukewarm and now that he's actually at Man City with another super talented squad, let's be honest, one that maybe needs a little bit of uh, rejuvenation, you know what I mean? Yaya Torre is past his best and all that, but you, line, you still have, yeah, you still have Aguero, you know what I mean? You still have like they still bought like 
high profile players. I mean, I don't I don't rate John Stones at all, but Oda Mendy, I thought was don't like, rate John Stones anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, all he talked about last year was, hey, Chelsea's getting John Stones, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, he's goddamn good. John Stones is not good. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious. Who's better than John Stones? Gary Cahill is better than John Stones. I don't. Know, let's not go, let's not take it to extremes. All right, I don't know about that. Listen, last year, I'll agree with you. I was really hoping that we would get John Stones because our season was a write-off, and I figured, hey, we'll just we'll just put a young English, you know, center back in there. Like John Stones is not starting on Man City. Good, you know what I mean? He doesn't deserve to start on Man City, like the team that has like arguably the highest budget of players in the. Well, not arguably, they do. They're like the highest paid players in in fucking the EPL. Which is already like a super high paid league, like the highest paid league in the world, right? Like player for player. And it's like, you can't have John Stone start on Man City. Like, he's not that good. He's a cup player. Yeah. On so, that roster, or should be. I mean, maybe he'll turn it around. He has a high ceiling. I understand why they signed him, but Ooh! he's, Check he's it not out. that good. We got, a, we got a C4 highlight over here. And a little bit of Daryl's airs over there. I pushed off the Reinhardt, and then I took a big old swig of whatever Roadhog drinks. Whooping ass over here. You're stealing my kills. That's what that was. You're standing behind me, getting getting chip damage on all my kills. So yeah. Anyways, uh, okay. fuck Pep Guardiola. That's uh, I guess that's we ended up talking about <laughs> Arsenal versus Man City, and ended up me talking about how I hate Pep Guardiola. But that's a uh, talk about that all day. Fucking hate that guy. Anyways, uh, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna—I mean, it's not a commercial break, but me and C4 are gonna take a little bit of a break so that I can shuffle the rest of the podcast together, and then, like you guys, it, this won't be any real break for you guys. It'll just be like a weird jump cut in the video, uh, and we'll be back. We're gonna talk about maybe some gaming shit. Uh, we got like a couple little game kind of things that we're gonna try out. Uh, I don't know. There's, we got a couple. I got a couple segments. things. What? Segments. Yeah, we got a couple. We got a couple little segments. It's, we'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah. So we'll be back in uh well a little bit in our time, but like a second. Oh. All right, and we are back recording. I know that was like a second for you guys, but we took a couple minutes to uh, refresh and refocus. So uh, I don't think this the, this part of the podcast is necessarily going to be quite as long as the first part, and I can't really promise you guys uh, any dis like set length for the podcast. We're basically just gonna the combination of how much we have to talk about and the amount of time that we have available to do these. But we'll try to make them, you know, like if we can get like this one's gonna go over an hour. I don't I don't think that's necessarily gonna be typical, but uh, like I like I want at least our podcast to be you know like bare minimum a half hour surely you know what I mean and I think that that realistically if we could shoot for an hour or f like 45 minutes to an hour I think that'd be a great length for a podcast uh, this is the first one I think it's gonna be maybe we'll have more to talk I don't know maybe we'll have more to talk about. Uh, for this one, maybe maybe we'll just keep it going with the extra long format. We'll have to, I guess, see kind of how things go as we go along. Anyways, uh, we promise you some gaming. Uh, actually, me and C4 were talking during the break. He's here. He's just not talking. He's letting me get this all out. But me and C4 were talking over a break, and I don't I don't remember. I could have sworn that I that I talked to you guys about this, but. Uh, Oftentimes, while we do this, we are going to have special guests, and they're basically going to be some of the buddies that we constantly play with. Uh, that's also not going to necessarily be, like, a scheduled thing, but uh, I wouldn't mind having, like, we could, we could have up to potentially, like, probably, like, what, five guys in this podcast or kind five. of thing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it... it it's not unreasonable to think that we'd be able to shoot one of these podcasts off with five different guys. I don't know, like, that might be too many guys, like, talking over each other. But, uh, you know, anywhere between two and and five people, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get to know those guys as we go around. They've been on, they've been in some of the videos on the channel before. 
uh, Ed the Face, Jimmy Jibs, uh, Gnarly Sheen. Uh, like I said, those of you who are brand new to the channel definitely don't know who those guys are, but uh, they've definitely featured in videos before, and they're all really cool, uh, interesting dudes. So uh, with that being said, I'll just leave that as those guys will be coming. I'm going to jump off their dick. And we're going to continue on with our podcast. Unless, of course, you have something to add oh, that's with that. Much. All right, sweet. Uh, yeah, that's good. Let's, so let's, let's get the gaming news out of the way, and then we'll, uh, we'll kind of do the extra little segments later, I guess. The surprise segment. Do you want me to start with this one bit of gaming news, because the, the, the lead-off, because it's, it's topical, and it's only really me yeah, okay, that's experienced go. it. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so uh, yeah, everyone knows the Pokemon Go craze. I got into it. I didn't get super hard into it, like nearly as any. Like I had buddies. Like I thought I was doing. Like I was kind of into it. But then like I went away to my buddy's cottage and a couple other friends I don't see a whole lot um, that live like in the main city. They also had the game and like they were like all. Like, I look like I barely played the game in comparison. So I guess I wasn't as, as into it as I wanted to. The reason I talk about Pokemon Go is like that was the biggest app like mobile game release. In like I, that I actually even remember. Oh yeah, so, it was. They've been Absolutely. hyping up this thing called Super Mario Run, which is just like all right, as an old school ish gamer, like when I was a kid, when Rob was well, Rob was a little bit. Darrow's arrows here is a little bit older than me, but like I grew when I first started getting into video games, like Mario on the old Nintendo Entertainment Center or whatever the fuck Nintendo Entertainment System. Yep. Was like a thing. So like they're hyping up this Super Mario Run game. And I was like, well, I mean, it's your typical like runner mobile app. But I was like, man, it's gonna be cool though, Super Mario. Yeah, like, sure. familiar. It yeah. was like hyped up as a free fucking game. Like maybe it was my fault for being ignorant and not digging into it. But I was like, all right, free game, cool, let's go. There's obviously gonna be some sort of like DLC you know, or ad paywall or DLC or like yeah, you pay for an ad free game or yeah, you yeah. pay to get in game currency or something like that. But I was like, all right, whatever. That's like expected. It's Nintendo. They have enough money, but they can also make money. Every well, that's pretty much like games in 2016. Everything you don't get the full fucking game. You have to buy everything. Anyway, I got this game, and I was like, all right, cool. It looks like the old Nintendos, like you're in World 1, Stage 1, World 1, Stage 2. I was like, all right, this is fun. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's, it's not, not yeah, the honestly, best game I've ever played. Sounds pretty cool. Then I beat it. I was on the, I got to, like, the castle, like, the final fucking level. And it's like, to play this level, pay thirteen ninety nine to get the full fucking game. <laughs> I, was, I don't think I've ever been honey, I don't think I've ever been honey potted like that in a video game in my life. I think I'm going to take a little bit of, uh, a little bit of the flack myself, because I went into it pretty ignorant. I didn't do any research, or, like, maybe all along, it said in the description that you can only play, like, this is a trial, it's not a free game. Yeah, yeah. Which is a valid point, and I just might not have looked into it, but I was astonished. I downloaded it last Last night and I was like, all right, let's fucking let's grind this game out here. And then, thirteen ninety nine. Fuck you, Nintendo. Yeah, fucking that, Asians. I think that's. I think we, we can all agree that's pretty ridiculous, right? I understand them having to make a. For a it's a runner. It's straight up like a fucking reskin of like Temple Run. Yeah. With just Mario, and they want you to charge thirteen bucks for it. Suck it. Uh yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty ridiculous. Like I, I honestly, I didn't. I didn't know that much about this game. I had no idea this game was coming out. Uh, th that's pretty scummy. I would consider Nintendo to be a a company that can probably just absorb the cost of something like that. With is that not like a reasonable thing to say? You know what I mean? Like, should Nintendo not be able to give something like not not that like obviously they're a business. They d they're not in for just giving away like freebies and shit, right? But like, this seems like one of those things that Nintendo would oh just take it on the chin a little oh bit, and then you know. Speaking of Nintendo, like the point you brought up, is Nintendo, like, they own Pokemon, right? Because, yeah, like, the do. Game Boy and stuff, yeah, yeah. like, Pokemon is Pokemon, but it's, like, still owned by, not to come off like a nerd, but we kind of grew up on, like, the earlier Pokemon games. Oh, yeah, the first and, like, two, absolutely. Yeah, but with, re well, with remastered kind of being, like, a way that game companies go, if they were really want to make money, think about if they remastered, like, Pokemon Red or Blue. Or iPhone, like it, uh, it fucking yeah. makes sense. Like iPhone's pretty much like a Game Boy. Think if they actually remastered something like that, like how much fucking money they would make. Oh man, I'm still surprised. Like I still have to like download like some wonky ass emulators so that I can play like Pokemon. I was uh, Pokemon Red, Blue, and then I played Gold. Yeah, I didn't even play kind of Gold. Guy. Yellow. You mean Yellow? But wasn't it Yellow? But you guys, you get, uh. The one I had Pikachu. Yellow. I had yellow because that's what I got my Game Boy. I got I had the yellow Game Boy. Oh, okay. And we're not super nerds, okay? We played this when I was like I stopped playing Pokemon when I was like ten. You know, at the appropriate age. I played <laughs> it when I was a kid. <laughs> whatever. If you're it's a big like, Pokemon, Pokemon head Pokemon now, whatever. Age. That's that's on you, yeah. I guess, bro. But it is what it is. You know. But yeah, that's that's just that little bit. So, uh, what's the other gaming news we have? 
Uh, let's fucking let's talk about Call of Duty, man. We can kind of like bring the channel back into this and talk about Call of Duty a little bit. Um, obviously, I mean, I feel like how much I don't like I don't know how much of a point there is even of us talking about this because I think that the commu the the Call of Duty community is kind of like overwhelmingly hated death. this game. Like, oftentimes we give other games flack that we just think aren't good enough, but, like, the community overall, like, little oh. kids are just like, no way, bro, I fucking love this. DLC forever, you know what I mean? Or whatever. So, like, usually... But, like, usually, like, man, remember fucking ghosts? Oh, my God. We were on a ghost heist. We had this video on our channel, people, if you don't know what it is. And it's, like, top ten reasons why Call of Duty Ghost is the worst Call of Duty of all time. Uh, which it was it, like, yeah, it was like our number one video forever. It was like yeah, our yeah. first viral video, kind of. Yeah, yeah. So, like, and people were so mad. Like, it was so divisive in the community. Like, it, like I couldn't believe it. I was like, I thought it was like a, like, that was like a, a home run. Like, an easy, like, lobber. You know what I mean? Like, we were going to do this, like, why Call of Duty sucks Fuck. so bad, and then we were just going to get it easy, right? Yeah. But then it became some, like, thing where it's like, oh, my God. There's like a legit population of the community that loves this game. How is this possible, right? But I think like like that video sit at like seventy six thousand views right now. Yeah. So, I think that obviously this game is like people are fed up with uh, the flying around bullshit, and I like I don't know. Here's my thing. I can't figure out little kids that play the game, because like are they fed up with? Like the fly around bullshit, or is it like the the pack shit, like the loot boxes that are like pissing them off? Like I think that like for us, like we're I would consider us like old timey COD players. You know what I mean? Like we're in the middle. We're in the middle. Let's be honest. We came in in the middle. Yeah, I mean we're we, old middle. We're not new era. Yeah, we're, yeah. I just feel like we're, we're more... We're Black Ops 1, and then we dabbled behind into Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. So, like, we came, like, we missed out on World at War, we missed out on Modern Warfare. But, um, to add to answer kind of your question where you said, like, what is it with why people like it, is, like, you gotta figure that there's, like, everyone knows, it's, 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 like, anything that goes popular on YouTube, anything that's popular in games that majority of people don't understand why it's po popular or anything like that, the answer is 99% kids. Yeah. This is the answer, some variation of kids. I just think that maybe there's just like, because how many years has it been? Three years? Four years since there's been like this whole futuristic advanced movement? There's probably a decent amount of people like that's the only Call of Duty they know. And then when they play the CODs that we like, when they yeah. play the Black Ops 1, they play the Modern Warfare 2, even the Modern Warfare 3, which I thought, I, I personally will always maintain that Modern Warfare 3 is an underrated game. I'm not going to like rant and rave, that's great. But they like that game's way too slow. They're not used to it. It's unnatural to them. So like you gotta figure that there's a chunk of people that live and die. Either you live and die by Call of Duty, or you're straight up just a new player. That you're the earliest COD you played would have been maybe Advanced Warfare. Yeah, that's fair. Or Black Ops Two. Even Black Ops Two was starting like even though it was a good game, it was still not like when Black Ops Two first came out, we're like, This is kinda cool, but it's not, you know, I'd yeah. much rather it not be this. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It was definitely a depart. I think that, but honestly, now like looking back, Call of Duty or Black Ops Two is probably the last great Call of Duty, like the newest, the newest story, the newest yeah. great Call of Duty. I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed Black Ops Three for what it was worth. Yeah. And I played the shit out of Black Ops Three. Yeah. But when I stopped playing Black Ops Three, it was abrupt, and it was once like they released the weapons in yeah. the loot boxes. So when they did the first rendition of the weapons. It was like, is this going to be it? Like, is this going to be like, they might add like three or four weapons after this. And like, that's kind of doable because I'm the kind of person that, you know, everyone knows. The, the, the beat topic to death is the whole pay to win, putting hiding shit behind. Yeah, like, yeah. I, if you Because we, we kind of touched on the, the futuristic stuff. The other thing is the pay to win. And yeah. I am actually in the minority where I enjoy the whole loot box, whatever, supply drop. Sure. Um, experience. Because games like Overwatch did it right. Strictly yeah. cosmetic only. It gives you a reason to grind. Because it's like, hey, I want that fucking skin. That skin's cool. Whereas if I could save up and buy it, I might not want to hop on the game as much. Because I don't know. I could just fucking straight up buy it. So, like, the fact that it's like it's also a mystery. It's a lottery. I'm an old enough person. I'm not an underage kid that's getting, like, potentially bad habits yeah, from yeah. 
you know, performing this like way that they want to try oh, to Corey, did you get microtransactions did you just, from me. Did you just win six thousand dollars from a website you've never seen before? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, and then, then we just find out that you actually own the website, Team Iron CSGO Lotto. But, yeah, but, but like, so like knowing that I, I like the premise of the loot boxes, as long as it's cosmetic only, like you can still make good money on cosmetic only. Yeah, man. Like fucking, like I think if you were actually smart and you really want to, I'd fucking put gold guns behind cosmetic, like that paywall. If you yeah. want to get fucking gold guns, you have to pull them from a loot box. If you want to get crazy, like, CS CSGO has the exact formula. I remember, I think it was Drifter, I'm not like a big Drifter fan, but I remember he made a video kind of how to like, make loot boxes worth it, and you make it kind of like a marketplace, where after every year, if they release special skins and stuff, you can kind of carry over and just like trade the skins that you don't want and sell them for like other stuff like that would definitely make a lot of sense yeah but the thing that i don't like about it obviously is my point i was making was i played the shit out of black ops 3 i loved that game when they did the first release of weapons there was no guns i'm pretty sure it was the first time they did it, it was all three yeah. melee guns i'm pretty sure yeah but i was like all right this is kind of annoying but i mean whatever the game's still pretty fun and as long as it's melee that's cosmetic all right it's no Real, like, there's a couple conspiracy theories that are like, oh, it's a little bit longer, so you get a better motion. But as long as it was still ma like a knife, just different types of knives, I guess I could deal with it. But then when they started bringing out guns, I, you know, there, people keep coming up with like, it's pay to win. These guys are getting great guns that like I don't have an opportunity to get. I'm at a disadvantage if I want to use stock guns because this guy here spent a bunch of real money. He got this real gun that's really, really good, and he keeps beating me because you know he has this gun. Yeah. I get that point. But I'm a kind of person that, like I want. I just want to use the guns. I don't even care if they're good. I just like, oh man, like that SMG. I'm an yeah, SMG new. guy. That it's SMG is real fun. This will be cool. I want to play with that SMG. Yeah. But I can't fucking play with it because I'd have to buy it. It's behind a paywall. That's the fact that yeah. lost me. And my th to my finishing point on the loot boxes is I, I follow a guy on. Um, I've talked to him on Twitter actually a couple times. A couple of you guys have seen me follow the Beast Mode TV official Twitter. Uh, eight thoughts. He's a Canadian. Yeah. Uh, you I know, I don't know. He's man. not. I'm not. A, I'm not. I wouldn't say that I'm like a huge, huge fan. Like I don't watch like all of his visual videos religiously. I mean, back in the day when I first started, I, I that's what I was talking to him about. I said realistically, when I thought that like I could be a YouTuber, was watching him, uh, Simple Minds, uh, yeah, those Six Pound Soft. Boots. Like those guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six Pound Soft. Those guys. Were, like, they were cool. So like technically, if I had to say I had inspiration, or someone was like, man, I could fucking YouTube. That seems like that could be. Ricky really cool. Chops. It was because of those guys. But yeah, Ricky Chops, he's But these guys, right now, Eight Thoughts is on a tear against like the T Martins, the popular guys. And I think 100% it's a movement that, like, if I don't really have a voice in the COD community, but it's something that 100% needs to happen is people are promoting the big YouTubers, they call them the COD cut suckers, if you will. Yeah. They promote supply drop opening. It's the problem right now. They need to, they need to 100% work out of the supply drops because if, you know, these big YouTubers keep promoting it. The little kids are going to continue to buy it. Yep. And like I said, where loot boxes aren't necessarily a problem, because you have games like Overwatch that do it right. It's cosmetic only. But they're not going to ever have to tinker with it, because they're never going to go away. It's such a big money-making platform that it'll, loot boxes will never go away. Everyone's excited for the next Call of Duty that's going to be boots on the ground. It's still going to have loot boxes, but the change that we can make is for them to stop putting weapons in it. I think if we like enough people that, man, if this keep this shit cosmetic only, they could still, it's like meeting in the middle, kind of. You can still have your loot boxes, you can still release like ridiculous skins, reskins. Even reskins aren't yeah, bad. Yeah. It was yeah. just a different, like, it's like, oh, look, it's an a the AK 47's in the game. But then they have a reskin for like the Black Ops 1 AK 47, or a reskin for any other variation of the, Black, of the AK 47. That's kind of annoying because I still want it, but it doesn't, like, you know what I'm saying? It's still, yeah, yeah. like, that's a middle ground. You have new guns, but it's not statistically different. And worst case scenario, I still have that gun. It's not like I'm going to be like, oh man, that gun shoots fire, has a different fire rate, yeah. has different attributes that I think would be cool. To... But anyway, not to, not to off, get off topic too much. Eight Thoughts, his newest video that came out today, which is December 16th. I don't know when you guys are going to be seeing this video, but getting ready for Christmas. Um, basically, you have guys like T. Martin and Ali A and all these other people that do supply drop opening videos. And that is basically free advertising for these supply drops and the same supply drops that we as you know it seems like a you know vocal majority want to change to these big youtubers to promote this they're the goddamn commercials they're the marketing all yeah. within just their own content just to make a quick buck on youtube they're going to showcase these supply drop openings and what people need to do because these people aren't going to stop people keep watching it little kids at the end of the day kids don't understand 
What the fuck's being sold to them? They love these games, they live and die by these games, and they want to see, oh my god, look at this guy, he's spending so much money to get these cool guns. Maybe I could be like this guy and get cool guns. Look at this guy, he's cool, he does supply drops. Maybe I should tell my parents to buy supply drops. Yeah. I think there needs to be a collective amongst all, like the majority, the adults that watch and enjoy Call of Duty and want to go back to what it used to be, just to dislike the living shit out of every single loot box opening video. If you see a loot box opening video, make sure that fucking thing has more, like, looks like the goddamn Infinite Warfare release trailer. Yeah. That, like, these people get discouraged from making these loot box opening videos. So that's what it's going to take. As soon as it starts affecting their bottom line, as soon as it starts affecting, like, man, I'm losing subscribers because of this. Man, I'm losing, you know, money, actual earned YouTube money from this. That will be the change that needs to happen. And I think, like, that's, uh, that's an initiative that, like... Don't have that little nerd white boy try to lead it. You need someone like that's relatable, like eight yeah, thoughts. Yeah. Um, if he can like somehow make it so the grand majority of people that watch COD videos, anytime someone does a supply drop over, you dislike the shit out of it, you're gonna start to see a change. Or don't in, watch it, man. You know how those things. That's are another promoted. big thing. Fucking, if you don't yeah, watch, they their will shit, say difference. But like, there's a difference. Disliking means they you still click on them, whether you you fucking you're still giving their their fucking video of view you gotta you gotta unsub you gotta not watch like when you see oh my god like you gotta not fall for the clickbait you know yeah. like and there's guys like a lot of those guys like a t martin like a whatever you can't trust like okay maybe they're like your call of duty news source or whatever which is like that's totally valid and because they're like in bed with like oh come on they're in bed with fucking everyone. I understand why you, like, yeah. logically, you might go, oh, man, well, obviously I'm going to go to T. Martin for news. Like, even though he's a dick, he's still, like, he's clearly Activision. Like, he's clearly paid. Obviously, he yeah, knows. he's getting firsthand. He's getting firsthand info. Yeah, yeah. And you know he's not going to give you, like, lead you wrong. He's not going to be like, is this the new gun? Like, you know that if he makes a video on it, it's going to be something that's coming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's no, like, yeah, he's not screwing around. Super excited, way. though, to tell you about it. Oh, man, he could not be more excited to tell you about it. Uh, I think that if you want a solution for just a, f a fair solution where Activision and all these guys are going to make money, but, uh, you know, we can still, like, come to a middle ground. I think the middle ground for me is that uh, make it so that you can... There's two ways to get the guns. You can have these ridiculously low uh, chances that you get them in supply drops, or you can buy them, like, whole piece for, like, 99 cents a gun or some shit. Well, A Thoughts made a thing where, like, remember the Peacekeeper in Black Ops 3? It came with DLC, so make it so guns come with DLC. That's yeah, easy. yeah. You still get money that way. Because the worst thing about people that, like, because, you know, there's, there's other the people that are on the side of, fuck you, I'm making supply drop openings. I might not be, like, I like the game, I'm going to stop doing this. But then you have the other people that are like, man, you guys need to stop supporting, cause, like, what I'm kind of saying. But the worst thing is that people that are against supply drop openings, they don't take anything into, like, it's like their own biased opinion of what they should do. They don't yeah. understand, like, Activision is a business. Why? Like, your great suggestion, congrats on making a half-hour video on how to fix supply drops. But it, if it doesn't make Activision money, it's never, like, it's not, you're not yeah. finding a middle ground. You're way too on, the, like, the right. You need to be in the middle. You're way too Donald Trump, bro. You need to be a little bit more of a, of a you know, yeah. a fucking, I don't know. I got, I got into the political realm, and I, didn't, I shouldn't have. Yeah. Anyways. It's the best. You know, you gotta think of a way. You gotta find, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get ready for the comment section. The best popping off that makes Activision money, but also makes it so like the user experience is better yeah and i think that's the best way is either have a dlc because that will that will boost dlc sales because if you don't buy dlc i don't get this sick ass gun or you just make it cosmetic only and then make the cosmetics you put the onus on the game developers to make really really cool skins as that is very possible i've seen a bunch of skins like fuck i want that shit that that gun looks cool as hell yep make me want to be like all right well it's this game that is fucking overwatch yeah skins these skins look cool as shit. I want... Like, we bought Halloween skins. We spent... Me and Rob combined spent probably about 50 bucks yep. to get Halloween skins that look really, really cool because they're limited offer. It makes it feel... Look at that four gold medals. It makes you feel special because you know, like, if I get this, no one else has it. I'm going to look cool. I'm going to stand out. It's not like Grand Theft Auto, for example, where Grand Theft Auto has the microtransactions, but everyone could get it. And then only after a certain amount of time, everyone has the items. You need that... Like, if you want to have something that's behind a paywall that's a skin... You need to make it so that it's actually like, fuck, I got that skin. Not many people I know have this skin. 
I'm gonna want to spend my money because when I get that skin, people are like, "Oh man, how the f they're jealous." It's like fucking anything, anything yeah. that you buy. You don't buy an expensive car. You don't buy a fucking Corvette, and then you know, see in a two days time, everyone else on the block has a Corvette. You want the Corvette, so people go, "Oh fuck, look at that thing. That thing's cool." Yeah. That's what then that puts the onus right now. They're taking the easy way out of just saying, "Let's put these fucking guns that we already designed for the game, which should be released with the full fucking release." Because right now you're buying the game and you're getting what. 80% of it, 75%, and they're hiding yeah. the rest behind paywalls. Yeah. But it puts the onus on them to constantly be creative, constantly come up with good ideas. And with a game like Call of Duty, that's been difficult for them over the last couple of years. It seems like they haven't had an original thought in quite some time. Yeah. You see um, bits and pieces of other successful games throughout. You see Destiny, you see Halo, you see Titanfall, you see all these things now in Call of Duty. So it seems like maybe where they're lacking in the creativity department where a game like Blizzard, a game like Overwatch, Blizzard behind them, they're one of the most creative people ever. Like, the skins they come up with are usually pretty pretty ingenious. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that looks fucking... Like, for example, like, yeah. So I just think that the lack of creativity and just making it... You know, it's it's just too easy just to say, you know, fuck, let's just put it behind the play wall. Let's put these guns. People are going to buy the guns. Um, it just shows, you know... Activision yeah. and company and everything that it comes to Activision is just incredibly lazy and it's the downfall of a game that fuck right now you, I love Overwatch I love playing Madden but I wouldn't love to have a Call of Duty to be able to switch to we're playing Battlefield right now we got Battlefield because it's boots on the ground and they, it's not nearly as like you don't want to be so full of yourself to act like because of me you know Beast Mode TV didn't buy Call of Duty this year that they're gonna really feel that impact yeah, but yeah. I definitely, you can tell from the sales and stuff that it's down. And there's a bunch of people right now that are saying enough's enough. Let's let our voice be, yeah. Like, of, Call of yeah, Duty sales have I think it was. considerably been going down. Like, like every year it's like le yeah, a little so bit less, a little bit less. And then this year, all of a sudden, it's like a 50% drop in hard copy sales. We're Which not is exactly what they fucking needed. Because, yep. like, as much as, like, I'm not a Battlefield player. We play Battlefield. I like it a little bit more than Darius Arrows. But at the yeah. end of the day, it's not my game. No. It's 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 an all right shooter. It's something different than Overwatch, but I would much rather right now go into the Christmas season. It's fucking cold as shit outside. It's snowing. I want to be inside. I'd rather fucking just group up with the homies and play because not everyone's on uh, fucking Overwatch. I'd rather yeah. just go group up and play Call of Duty. We used to have so many parties, so many nights, so many weekends of just playing Call of Duty. But now because there's a big discrepancy between our friends of all these games and Call of Duty sucks this year. Fucking like half the time, no one's on because everyone's playing different games right now. It's a different stroke for different folks. Whereas yeah, right. it's a good Call of Duty that people like. So like, where I'm coming at is just basically it's disappointing that going back to like the whole supply drop thing that Call of Duty has kind of rested on their laurels, have kind of rested on the Call of Duty name. They've got lazy, and it's really affected the consumer more so than just like, oh, I'm not gonna play your, I'm not gonna buy your game this year. I'm not gonna give you the satisfaction of making this sale. But it's also just the social aspect, man. Like so many people, like. So many times, like, I just think about the Christmas month for since I've been a gamer and since I've played with, you know, some of the guys we said that might be guests on our podcast. I just think, all right, so winter months, that's when everyone's going to be grouping up. Probably t at least, like, twice a week we're going to have a big game session playing Call of Duty. Oh, yeah, and that's not the case this year because the game sucks. Yeah. And that's just, like, frustrating. It's more so not just like, oh, it's futuristic. It's not boots. The game just sucks. Yeah. And it's because they're lazy. So hopefully, you know, the next iteration of Call of Duty is is good and it can... You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be unrealistic and expect it to fully bring the franchise back on track. But as long as it can be a step in the right direction, I think that's really all we can ask for. Because I like Overwatch a lot, but Overwatch right now is it's already at, you know fringe a two-year game considering that like it was Overwatch before Call of Duty, and then it was supposed to be Call of Duty's coming out. Can't wait for that. Overwatch is going on the back burner. So we're at, we're technically even though Overwatch is not two years old, we're in like phase two of Overwatch. You know, like where guys like Thunder's like, oh, it's year two of Black Ops two, three or whatever. Yeah. Um, right now, if Call of Duty's truly dead, it's looking like fucking Overwatch is gonna be the game. And I don't know. I I just like to go back to oh, oh, like have a throwback Thursday, if you will, of having a good Call of Duty that everyone can go back and chill yeah, and man. play. It'd be nice. I think that for a long time, Call of Duty was the sort. I don't want to say default game, but it was a game that. Everyone was able just to be like, just pick up and play, and it was it was more than just a game. If you wanted to go hard and go competitive and get all sweaty, you could do that. But if you wanted to go and chill, it was a nice spot where you could just have a good time, I guess. Okay, just one last thing before you go on your part. Yeah. At any given point, put it this way, you, you just see from the dwindling, but at any given point during Black Ops 1, which was our first game, we could group up with like, there, we, it was like, 
I remember nights where we had to pick and choose who we were playing with because there's more people than what a party could allow. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got eight people on playing right now. Who are we going to decide to play with? But then, like, you know, every, even Black Ops 2, which was a good game, it was still just like, all right, we had our core four people. Like, there wasn't, like, an overwhelming, everyone was playing this game. We had to, like, make a decision or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sucks, man. There's no there's no way to get around it. It just... it The state of the community sucks. I think that, like, a lot of times it's popular to hate on Call of Duty. I get that. So it's like, it's kind of like, it's almost at this point, it's like swinging down. You know what I mean? Like, it's so easy to hate on yeah. Call of Duty. It's just, it's almost like, you almost feel bad for like, especially if you're a YouTuber, you almost feel bad for like doing it nowadays. Because it's just, it's so done. But, uh... Picking on the short kid. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Because everyone fucking picks, picks on this fucking game. But it, it's just like, it's, it's legitimately sad that like, when was the last time we didn't buy Call of Duty? You know? Never. If even like the shitty ones, even the ones that were we were like, ah, I don't think it's gonna be a good game. Yeah. We'd still buy it. Like Advanced Warfare, we we're pretty skeptical on that after Ghost. Yeah. But we still bought it. Fucking. Well, we knew we were gonna buy Black Ops. Black Ops games are usually on point, but yeah. yeah. It's like I'm not buying it. This weekend is the free to play. They have a free to play weekend. I wasn't even gonna download it. Yeah, I'm not. Wanna, I'm like, not playing play it. This. I'm not playing it. Like the re. Like, the remastered might be alright, but the fact that, like, they're being such hard asses about selling that game separately, like, fuck you! Yeah. Like, literally, you could ha I'd give you money if you made this old school game that I personally, I've never played, so they'd be like a brand new game for me. Yep. But you're just being a dickhead because you want to sell this bullshit game that no one wanted in the first place. Yeah, you're well, fuck you, you're not getting anything. Piggybacking, you're piggybacking you off, thing. like, other success, yeah. right? Well, you're ruined, because, let's just say, what if, what if Modern Warfare Remastered, a lot of people, you know, it's kind of split that it's a good game or a bad game. Um, what if it's actually truly a great game, but because you're so... You're such a dick about it. It sounds like they're, it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like they're in, like, they're trying to spite themselves. They're like, you know what, fuck, you guys don't like this game? Well, fuck, you're not getting this other game that might be great, because, you know, you're not buying the other game that we have, that we're telling you to buy. You're like, they're, it's like they're perceiving that Infinite Warfare is the game that, like, no matter like what the sales look like, they're just gonna keep perceiving that Infinite Warfare is the reason why people are buying that and not to get the Modern Warfare remastered. Yeah, absolutely. It's just like maybe it's like a spite thing. Like it's like, oh fuck you, man! You're not getting Infinite. You're not getting this game sold separately. You have to buy the full shot. Yeah. Like I don't know if that's to buff the numbers so that when it's all said and done, it makes their sales look like you know some you know fucking uh, some damage some damage like fucking control. Like oh yeah, but look at the sales look pretty good at the end of the day, kind of thing. I don't know, but you know, fuck you. Unless until Modern Warfare Remastered comes sold separately, I'm not giving a goddamn dime until I see what the next game's looking like. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Oh yeah. Uh, but at uh, least at least this game's dope, so I'm not starving. Yeah, yeah this yeah this game's. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, th this is one of those things that I know like we could rant on this for a lot longer than than even this. It's probably a better idea just like. I can just cut cut her off, you know, clean break on the Call of Duty rant. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I've like you said it all. I call like Call of Duty makes me like mentally tired now, just to like even think about because it's such you're frustrated by like every turn. Like it's not even like. Ugh. It's not the game. It's not like you're getting frustrated playing the game. You're no. frustrated about like the management, yeah, how yeah, they're yeah. handling this game. That's what I mean. Franchise, man. the state it's, of the franchise. Yeah. It's really it's fucking. It's and it's like I said, it's something that we loved for so long. So it's just it's super disappointing to like see it the way it is. And of course, like oh, they brought back, they made fucking uh, Black Ops One, our favorite game, probably backwards compatible. But psych, we're putting on these bullshit servers, so the game's unplayable anyway. Yeah. Yeah, Call of Duty is a mess. That's Call of Duty. Slash and rant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. So, let's, uh, let's, let's really switch, let's switch gears to some of my, like, I thought this would be kind of funny. Uh, we're not gonna, I won't put any, like, real rules on, uh, how you answer this time. Because I think we're all adults. And we're not going to try to answer based on, like, loopholes and, like, BS like that. Just try to answer within the, uh, you know, the confines of the question. And, uh... What the fuck are you going on about, bud? Just, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, uh, 
some of the most about to sign a waiver. Yeah, yeah. I just want to I just want to ask you some of the most serious questions you're ever gonna have in your life, and that's uh, fuck Mary kill, Ronald McDonald, the Burger King, or Wendy's girl. So this is what comes in. Does it, is this is this like is this like a subliminal where I like to eat kind of thing? <laughs> like is that how I could like could, is that how I could like mentally like are you gonna well, like McDonald's Burger King? I need I need, I need to know I need to know which which fuck Mary kill and I need to know why. You have to you have to say why. Okay, so I would kill McDonald's because uh, their breakfast is yet their, that their breakfast looks so good. It gives me sh the shits. Like All it's right. so good, but it's also so violent. So like yeah. just kill it. Get it out of there. Uh, fuck would be Burger King, because Burger King's good in spurts. Yeah. I feel like it's still, like, you still tell it's mass-produced. But it's, but, we're not, we're uh, not talking about, no, I get we're not talking about Burger King. We're talking about the Burger King. Oh, but that's my mental, so I'm, I'm right. associating it. I All hate right. clowns, and the food <laughs> is, like, the worst, I think, out of the three. It gives me the shits. I like the breakfast, but, so All kill right. Mc Ronald McDonald. I would fuck, uh, who, what's the Burger King guy? Just the Burger King? The Burger King, you know the guy with the mask, the plastic yeah, well, yeah, mask? Yeah, because he looks like he's rich, he looks yeah. like he's kind of rich, but he might also play you a little bit, yeah. and then generally Burger King food is alright in spurts, yeah. and I would marry Wendy's, because Wendy's food seems like it's the highest quality, and uh, I, I, I actually kind of want to go against it being Wendy, I, I think I'm more associated being Dave uh, Thomas. Dave Thomas. <laughs> I'm very Dave I would, Thomas. I would definitely have, I would, I would definitely have an old man relationship with Dave Thomas. Wasn't was Dave Thomas ever like on, uh, like was he ever yeah, like commercials? A, he was no, like, no, 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 no. Was, always like, was he ever like, was he ever like cartoonized for that like, like oh, I don't put on so. like any shit? You know, they ever like draw no, Dave I Thomas and like, hey, it's Dave. All right. Oh. I don't think so. All right, so that's fair. Uh, I would, I would also. I think I would fuck. I'd fuck Wendy's because it's just anatomically more ap appealing to me. I would. I would also kill. I would kill uh, McDonald's because clowns. Uh, when I was a little kid, uh, the okay. <laughs> you want to? You want to hear? You want to hear a, a funny story? But. When I was uh, when I was a little kid, uh, like grade prime, grade like probably like one or two, we had reading buddies in elementary school, and my reading buddies were like grade six girls, and they told me all about It by Stephen King, and it terrified me oh. as like a as like a seven year old boy. So uh, I always had a thing with like cl against clowns after clowns. that. I was just like, so uh, I'm not feeling the Ronald McDonalds, uh, and then I'd marry I'd marry Burger King. Because he's a king, all right. I'm marrying into royalty, some kind of burger royalty, all right. So, yeah. so I'm gonna marry. I'm gonna marry the Burger King. That's uh, that's my. So, so I guess to actually pull 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 my justification in, you could assume that it by by like what your selection is, you're also getting that food. Like that's what you're consuming while you're with them. I guess that could be the. That's the caveat. Yeah. You know. To to yeah. that. Okay. Still, he's a royalty. I rather rather eat Burger King, G JBCs, or you know what I mean. That's a fair. That's a fair. That's a fair assessment. I can't go wrong with that. Like I could flip flop to your to your choices, but uh, consensus, Ronald McDonald. He's, he's yeah, not making he, it. Yeah, he's, he's not. Yeah, he's <laughs> not. He's not making it out of this this rodeo here. That's fair. Uh, okay. Do you, we can do we can do like we'll do. You want to do one more fuck Mary kill and then we'll then we'll change it to the other one. See if we can find something. Oh yeah, something. I was like, we should do like, a, we should like. I get a three. lot. I get a lot. Yeah, do three. We'll All do right. three. All right. Then right. we have like a bigger audience, maybe we because like when we have more people, we probably won't be as you know on the sports and stuff wouldn't go as long. Yeah. So we we open it more up to the game. So yeah, do I say do three? Oh my God, there's some. Uh, all right, we're gonna do uh, an intelligent one. We're gonna bring it up. Fuck, Mary kill, Bill Nye, Neil deGrasse Tyson, <laughs> or Carl Sagan. <laughs> Who the fuck's that? Who's Carl Sagan? He's the uh, really? he's the psychedelic cosmos guy. He's a oh he's yeah. Well, okay, I'm killing that guy right off the bat because I don't really know who the fuck he. Is. All right, fuck fair enough. Is. Actually, I'd fuck him off the bat because I don't know who he is. All right, so all right, fair enough. It'd be a one night stand kind of uh, thing. All right, I would kill Bill Nye the Science Guy because I saw uh, on Reddit 
a like someone made a post like name your talk about your experiences with famous people and like it literally turned into like the first thing was like oh yeah i met this band oh yeah but then like the, like half the fucking post is like people that live in bill nye's town just say like he's like, the biggest dickhead <laughs> ever. oh really oh that's <laughs> like, that's so yeah, like literally like he's like the biggest yeah he's like the biggest like he said like one of the stories is like this guy's like, hey, I remember I was a little kid. I went up in a supermarket and asked Bill Nye for his autograph. And he told me to fuck off. What? <laughs> really? Yeah, he was like, yeah, Bill Nye is supposed to be like the biggest asshole ever. And oh then I'd marry Neil deGrasse Tyson because, you know, he's Neil deGrasse Tyson. Dark chocolate. Yeah. Because once you, because black got don't, because nice black don't crack, baby. Yeah. Black don't crack, you know? Yeah. Well, he seems like the most relatable. He seems like the least nerdy out of all the nerds. Yeah, uh, I think that I would, I would also kill Carl Sagan. Or no, you you killed Bill. <laughs> do you kill Bill Nye? I can't remember what you said now. I killed, no, no, I, yeah, I killed Bill Nye, and I oh. fucked Carl Sagan because I don't know who he is, all and right. I married Neil deGrasse Tyson. All right, I think that I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill Carl Sagan, even though I don't, I like, I actually kind of like him. I think he's a cool dude, but uh, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna fuck Bill Nye because as a uh, I had too many good childhood memories in science class, where it's just like, oh, we're putting on Bill Nye again, guys. We're gonna watch another. <laughs> Bill, <laughs> yeah, Bill, exactly, Bill, Bill, Bill Nye, <laughs> the science guy. So you know, I just I have too many positive memories to uh, ever kill Bill Nye. So I'm gonna have to go with. Uh, I'm gonna have to uh, fuck Bill Nye, and then I agree with you. Uh, you know, I think there's some there's some sort of uh, like a rock star type quality to. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, that I can't quite, I can't, he has a je ne sais quoi, you know, about him. And I don't know, uh, French, I don't know what. And I just think that, like, I just, I don't know, he's just the most interesting, I think he's, uh, of the three, he he makes science. I think he'd shit. be annoying, though, to live with, because he'd always be like, do you know that, like, every time he'd talk to you, it seems like he'd end every sentence, like, but we're still a big, we're still a part of the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that's definitely him. That's <laughs> definitely him. It's 100%. Neil deGrasse Tyson is is the guy that's just like, well, you just had a delicious turkey sandwich, but did you know yeah. that turkeys yeah. evolved from fucking vicious raptors? Yeah. <laughs> and it just it goes into like an hour <laughs> an hour conversation about fucking raptors, and it's like it's like fucking Neil deGrasse like Tyson. He kind of got to correct you. He'd correct yeah. you a lot. Yeah, like, and it's like, like I I can't stuff, keep yeah. like. Like you know, we're we're at dinner and we're having all these conversations. Yeah, like can't I can't I, I can't keep this up. Where we're just talking about like we we just got through what we're eating. Condescending. It's I just like all like it's been a four hour conversation about just like the things that we're eating for supper tonight. Because everything is just like, did you? Oh, it's like it's like oh, yeah, what, are, what are you gonna what are you gonna have? You know, he'd have that fucking like yeah, yeah. rainbow that flies. Away. Like the more you know. Yeah. Well, it's just yeah. He, every day. He's the guy that's like all right. Uh, what are you gonna have in your your uh, turkey sandwich? And it's just like, uh, you know, I'm I'm just I'm, I'm pretty plain Jane. Just maybe it's like some mustard. Be like, oh, you're gonna have mustard? Well, did you know that mustard seeds are like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that. That's what it is. And it's like, no, Neil, I didn't know that. But thanks for giving me a one-hour documentary with a lot of really cool science, <laughs> yeah. uh, like science fucking uh, facts about it. So so yeah. Uh, but I still like I like. It sounds like I'm shitting on Neil deGrasse Tyson, but I think he's still, like, of the three, I think he's just, like, a cooler, more modern, they were blacker, into it though. Uh, uh, you know? fucking Bill Nye, you know? I think he's I think he's Bill Nye for, like, this generation. You know what I mean? In my opinion. So, yeah. Uh, all right. And uh, last one. We'll do, we'll do one more Fuck, Mary Kill. And then uh, we'll move on. Oh my god. This one, oh, I right, saw this one. Note. I'm a fucking soldier and I got 350 health right now. Yeah, bud. Loving it. Fucking just a monster. With that fucking Symmetra. If you guys are wondering why I've been playing Symmetra all night, if for all those of you guys that actually play this game, she got buffed. And I'm trying to get good with her. And I think that she's actually like an absolute monster if you fucking know what's going on. Uh, but yeah. Alright, here's the last one. Like, I might have to wait till this round's over, because I just don't, like, just to, like, even look, even look at, like, the, the three options for this last one, it's just, like, it's making me not feel good. Like, I actually am just, like, mm, might need to take, like, might need to have a Tums, you know? Might need to take a tablet, if you will. Alright, but anyways. Careful. Yeah, Careful, no. Careful, you and Tums, get another kidney stone. Yeah, no, fuck, yeah, that's a story for another day. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, here, here's your, here's your fuck, Mary kill. I, I guess you would call these 
famous female, not even, fa like famous, no, I don't even know. They're female celebrity slash, like, they have some amount of fame to them. Like, you're going to know 100% who these three people are. Uh, but I, I wouldn't, like, I don't know. It's just a mess. I'm looking at these three people, it's just a mess. So here, here's the last one. Here's, uh, fuck, Mary kill, Martha Stewart, Caitlyn Jenner, and Rosie O'Donnell. There's your, there's your fuck, Mary kill. Okay. It's just like... Okay, kill... Kill Caitlyn Jenner 100%. That's like the worst thing to ever happen. Okay. It's the worst thing not to ever happen. It's the worst thing that I've ever have shoved in my face in yeah. my adult life. Yeah, like, all right. Like, I'm expected to, like, to, to pay attention to it and stuff. Like, I don't give a fuck. Who is it? Martha, um... Martha Stewart, oh, Rosie Christ. O'Donnell, Caitlyn Jenner. 100% 100% Mary Martha Stewart. Like, that's no-brainer. You fucking... She's like, a, her job's like a professional housewife. You'd have the easiest life ever. Marza Stewart. She'd cook for you. I don't know. I think she that has, she she did some time. You think that I was gonna Rosie say? O'Donnell's an annoying bitch. She's an annoying bitch, and she's opinionated. She's on the View. Her yeah. job is just to go on oh. and on about shit no one cares about. Oh, so worry. like, I guess I'd have to have to plow her just to, <laughs> like I guess for the sake of the game. Oh yeah. But uh, Martha Stewart, I think out of all these options, I think well, I think I think I have the pretty clear path here because Martha Stewart, housewife. Gonna have a goddamn. You never have to cook or clean. She's gotta do that. She enjoys doing that. Yep. And then Caitlyn Jenner just getting rid of that thing off the face of the earth. Yeah, that's fair. Those, yeah, that's my answer. All right. Very thought out answer. Yeah. Uh, right. yeah. yeah. Like I said, it was it was for me it was cringe worthy. It's cringe worthy. Uh. I still don't really know the the order because it's just so awful. Probably. Oh man, I don't know. What's I, so wrong with Martha Stewart? Okay, that's what I think I'm holding on. I think Martha Stewart. I think Martha died. Stewart is yeah. is your only out in this whole thing. It's just like, all right, Martha Stewart, I can put her in a real safe spot, you know. Like I can find a spot for the other two, the other two that I'm having, a, I'm having a lot of trouble with here, you know. I fucking I I have like a deep seated hate for Rosie O'Donnell. Like I think <laughs> like can I, I'm just gonna be totally honest with you. I think I'd rather. Fuck Caitlyn Jenner, just so I would be able to kill <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell. Like, I fucking hate Rosie O'Donnell. I fucking hate her. I hate her so much. She's so goddamn annoying. And I think that if I gotta fuck Caitlyn Jenner in order to kill Rosie O'Donnell with just, like, a hammer, <laughs> I think I might have to fucking do it. Like, I think that's, that's what, I think, I think that for sure, Martha Stewart, Mary Martha Stewart, you know, she's like, she's like a, my grandma, she's gonna cook me, like, fucking cookies every morning, it's gonna be just, well, look, fucking dares, dares, play the game, Symmetra, it's ridiculous, like anyway, both are on fire, too, we're the only two on fire, oh, yeah, the charged up fucking laser over here, just, from a, just from a murdering, montage standpoint just, here. just, just murdering, that was a four piece, let's go, uh, but yeah, I think I would, I would, obviously, I would marry Martha Stewart, uh, I'm gonna have to take one, I mean, like, I'm not gonna be bottom here. You're on record. Ka Ka You're on Ka record saying that. <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner. Ka Caitlyn Jenner is gonna be on the bottom here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do it, and then I'm gonna, oh my god, I'm just gonna get, like, a, the most, like, I don't e like, I don't even know. I've, I'm just, I'm trying to think of, like, what I would use. I think the best way to kill her here is a good one. You take off those blow-up hammers, but you yeah. put something in it that, like, before you blow it up, put in, like, um, I don't know. Oh, put in, like, you know you get two magnets that stick together, but for some reason they're super heavy? Yeah. Like, you put two of those in the blow-up hammer, so that, like, it's it will eventually kill her, but it'll take a bunch of time, and then you have the irony of hitting her with a, camera, uh, a hammer that squeaks every time you hit her in the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's my answer. That's, uh, that's a fuck Caitlyn Jenner, Mary Rosie, or Mary, uh, Mary Martha Stewart, and kill Rosie O'Donnell with just, like, the most, just disgusting, just inhuman way possible. Like, fucking human centipede, her with, like, I don't even know, like, just, like, the worst, the worst things I could think of. Alright, uh, that's enough fucking Mary Kill for right now. We're going to do one more thing, and then we'll wrap this podcast up, because it's already... It's going to be, like, a two-hour podcast. I assume that, like, maybe we do, like, a two-hour special podcast, like, once a year. But here we are. 
just trucking along. So maybe maybe they'll all be long. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to do uh, Would You Rather, and uh, I'm I'm having them generated from like a website. So some of these guys are gonna not make sense, but we'll we'll do we'll have a Would You just do like three Would You Rathers just to go with the three Fuck Mary kills. So uh, these are all gonna be generated. We're just gonna it's gonna take two seconds because some of them are dumb, but uh, once again it's like you gotta. You gotta pick, and then you gotta say why. You know what I mean? It's not enough just to pick. So uh, here it is. Would you rather? Uh, it says any Pokemon you want will become real, but you have to treat it with the same amount of respect you give any animal, or it will vanish. <laughs> what? How's that mean? I don't know. That, does, that doesn't even make sense. That doesn't even make sense. Website. There's no option. That's just yeah, a no. general like. That sounds like can you can have this or What's not. Another option. Great start. Yeah, no. Someone okay. Uh, the yeah. Blog. Yeah. Great. Great job. Great job. Website. Uh, fuck it. Let's try another one. I mean, we can just can this section if it sucks too bad. Uh, would you rather you can become king of any? Oh, I guess it's like if if this then this. I guess is like maybe that's how they structured them. Uh, like you can have yeah, this, yeah. but. This like yeah, comes yeah, along yeah. with it. You can become king of any country of your choosing, but within 30 years, you will be deposed by revolutionaries, and there is an 80% chance they will execute you. Would you? Would How you, long was it? Uh, 30 years. Any country, you can be king of any country you want, but within 30 years, there's going to be a revolutionary. That's, all, that's the only. That, that's the only parameters. Yeah. Does it say when I have to become king? No. It just says 30 years. All right. Well, I'm gonna fucking knock this one out of the park. All right. No. So I would become king. Yeah, I right. would become king. Yeah. There's no parameters. It's just that I'd become king when I'm probably 60. Yeah. So that I'm fucking like when I think when I'm the time I might die before I have to take the punishment. Yeah. And I'm a king. So that means that when I'm like fucking at my worst, when I'm like the least attractive, like a feeble old man, yeah. people are gonna have to respect me. I can get like hookers and shit because I'm the fucking king. Yeah. <laughs> King. Go. That's how you I got king. I got. Out of the I, got I got king hookers and shit. Yeah. All right. Uh, I would go king of Brazil because Brazil has really smoking hot women, and their soccer team weather. is really good. I don't know. W weather the is weather. amazing. And then you say. And I'd be the king of the fucking triads and shit. Like, king yeah. of, like, all the fucking gangs. So I wouldn't yeah. have to worry about getting the favela. Kids murdered. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Try to fr and when the revolutionary comes, I'm going to have fucking favela warriors on my side. I don't know. I don't know. When when would I do it? It doesn't matter right now. I'd be king right now. Bring it on. All right. Let's, tr let's try another one. That was that was okay, but it wasn't, wasn't that great. Let's try another one. All right. Here's the thing. You'll be the richest man in the entire world, but you'll live in the world after a nuclear war, just like like those Fallout games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you'd be the there'd be nothing to fucking buy. There's a nuclear war, and like, sounds like that scenario would be that there's not many people living. I probably could just steal or take whatever wasn't destroyed. I wouldn't need money. Yeah, the rich like money might be irrelevant. Yeah, that's fair. I I think that I all I also am going that same way. You know, the richest guy in, like, a nuclear follow war is, like, the guy that doesn't have a fucking third eye growing out of his fucking, yeah. you know what I mean, the side of his fucking dick or something like that. So I think that, <laughs> <laughs> that, like, I think that, like, no, I would rather not be, you know, I not, I don't care about that. I think I'd rather just, I'm, I'm, I'm all good. I don't want to be the richest man in, like, Fallout World or whatever, even though I like that game. Uh, all right, last one. That was a little bit better, but not... Still not that great. I might have to curate these before the next time we do it. Uh, okay, here's this. Uh, all your goals, wishes, and desires will be fulfilled, and you will live a successful life, but everyone you have ever known and loved will dis disremember you, and you will never see them again. I guess that means not remember you. I don't know if disremember is okay, so a word. I wasn't fully paying attention. What was the first thing? All your, all your goals and wishes and desires that you have right now are going to get, like, fulfilled. Yeah. But everyone you've ever yeah. known and loved, aren't. Like, they're not going to, like, no, they'll never know you. You'll, they'll never know who you are, and you'll never be able to see them again. Oh, we're getting real dark here. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty dark, right? Fuck it, no, I'd take, yeah, I'd take the first one. 
Since you take all your goals. Because, and... Yeah, because my goal, like my, who says what my goals could be? Well, there's loopholes in all these ones. Like not yeah, loopholes no, that... to make this game stupid, but there's loopholes. Like, my goal would be, I want to be a fucking trillionaire, and I'm pretty sure money could get me most of the relationships that I would have lost back. Yeah, you can't. That's what I'm saying. So when you, or at least help. When you like get... not necessarily like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be rich so like I get everything back. But I'd be, I'd have enough money to like maybe naturally fabricate ways to get things back the way they work because I know I think that's like a lost memory thing that's like one of those like look what if everyone lost their memory like would I like you know, the whole 30 first dates movie without him saying I was just yeah, like yeah. well I fucking know how to like set everything back up by the the means and ways to just like get everything back to normal if I have to take this bet why not yeah like I said I think that's 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 like a hundred percent of the that's the shit that you you can't like you have to go with like, no, for the rest of your life you'll never be able to like undo it. Otherwise, it's like it, this question doesn't like work. You know what I mean? This question is stupid. Oh, I don't like this question. Yeah, yeah. this question is stupid. All right, we'll do a bonus one. We're gonna do one bonus one. Hopefully, it's better. If not, then we're gonna wrap this shit. The one with us is you know a little bit more sunny side. You know. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree. It was a. That one that's like you can have something really great or something super depressing. Okay, go. You can become fluid in every language, including the dead ones, but you can no longer speak your native language. You have my thanks. Uh, so you can't, you can't cop out and be no. like, I'll just learn it. Yeah, yeah. You'll never be able to learn yeah, English. No, because fucking most of the world, any of the places that I ever really want to visit will speak English anyway, so I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, no one likes that guy. You know, the kind of guy that's, that brags that he can speak a bunch of languages is the kind of guy that like took like history in college and can get a job. So It's not even no a bunch. Anyway. It just means you can pick any one language to... I think that... Yeah, I think... I, oh! Yeah, it's yeah. only like one language or English? Yeah, yeah. It's like you can switch your... You, you can be fluid in any one language. language. Yeah, I agree. I think I think that... Maybe we might be biased, but I think I agree with you that I think that English is probably one of... I think that one, it's the best language. I also think that like... Statistically, English is like one of the hardest languages to learn if you're not like natively fluent in it. English, yeah. So like, yeah, I I'll, I also agree with you that like, well, my my answer is a little bit different, but like, screw that. I would never. Uh, I think English is probably the most useful language. And why the hell would I like? Didn't say I was allowed to like move anywhere I wanted. Or something like that. So like, why would what I want to? the point? Yeah, we had to stay where we are right now. Why would I want to be can in? I speak Dutch. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like the only thing it says is that you get to change your language. It doesn't say you get to like move wherever you want and then like all this stuff. So I think that yeah, absolutely, stay with English. I'm all set. Even like French. I don't want to move to Quebec. Screw that. Uh, yeah. Hey, fuck Jimmy Jibs. Yeah, fuck that Jimmy Jibs, motherfucker. Uh, yeah. But with that being said. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna cut the podcast off. It's already gonna be super long. It's gonna take like ten hours to upload. Uh, so yeah, if you made it, my God, how many people do you think make? It? I can't wait to see the analytics to see that one like hardcore guy that like. I'll actually, plug it on Twitter and stuff, so we might. Yeah. Yeah, but like I want to see that one guy it's that actually be more made so, it. Like, like once we get where we want, people can go back and watch all these. So like yeah, I'm not yeah. expecting a huge return, but the content will be yeah will be there. Well, they, if you're the one guy that actually made it to the end of this <laughs> podcast, you're like monster. you're the real MVP. You're the real MVP. Uh, like I said, we'll uh, we'll be doing more of these podcasts. They'll be up intermittently. Uh, no set schedule yet, but. Uh, my intention is to kind of improve on this uh, make sure you leave a like on this video comment below with questions that we could add to a possible Q&A section for the next podcast uh, thank you for joining me metal C4. Uh, it's been yeah, your boy and, uh, Rob Steele and I uh, just want to say that we will try to have another one of these out before Christmas oh yeah and we're going we're gonna to uh, definitely try we're like uh, we're 100% going to have one more of these before, like, well, during the holiday period, for sure. All right, yeah, and it's C4, you're chilling. Yep. Uh, say in Beast Coast, I guess this is, like, this is our first Beast Coast, like, official video. video. Official uh, not re-upload. Yeah, 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 this is it. So, welcome to the Beast Coast. Hopefully, big things. Big things. I don't even have, I don't even have a Dreams hook. And shit. I don't have a big hook line or anything yet. Eventually, I'm going to get a Beast Coast hook line. Anyways. It's your boy, Darius Arrows. Dropping sacks and ripping packs. Yeah, I guess, you know. Darius Arrows, C4, 
Beast Mode TV, the Beast Coast. We out.